Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have established a quorum, so therefore we're going to take roll call. Mr. LaFoyle. Here, and thank you for coming. Miss Adair. Good evening, President. Mr. Macias. Good evening, welcome. I'm sorry, Mr. Macias is our board secretary. Uh, Mr. Flores. Good evening, welcome. Mr. Salyer. Good evening, thank you for coming. Our Vice President of the Board, Ms. Williams. Present, thank you for coming. And I'm uh, Board President, Mr. Arnoldo Salinas. Dr. Mackey. Good evening, and we have our uh, Business CFO, Mr. Jose Elizondo, Executive Director of HR, Ms. Elaine Howard, Mr. Kirshner, Executive Director of Operations, and uh, Ms. Nancy Robinson, Associate uh, Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you. This uh, regular meeting of the Judson Board of Trustees is hereby called to order. I am very pleased that you have taken time to join us this evening. As the Judson Board of Trustees, we are here to set goals and policies and oversee the management of the district. We are responsible for approving budgets, contracts, personnel appointments, and to listen to reports from the superintendent. We are not here to make administrative or management decisions pertaining to the daily operation of the district. This is the responsibility of the superintendent. In compliance with the state government code on open meetings, tonight's agenda has been appropriately posted. This is a meeting in public, not a meeting of the public. As our guests, you are welcome to observe and listen. These proceedings are being video and audio recorded and will become part of Judson's permanent legal record. In order that the tape adequately reflects these proceedings, Please silence your mobile phones and refrain from talking while others are speaking. Since it is legally mandated that these proceedings are recorded accurately, I may have to ask for order periodically should I notice that disruptions are interfering with our recording's capability. Once again, we extend to each of you a sincere welcome. Thank you for your interest in our Judson ISD School Board meeting. We will now proceed with the invocation by Dr. Mackey, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please stand? Okay. Would you please bow your heads and open your hearts? Our Father, which art in heaven, we want to graciously thank you for so many wonderful and kind things that you helped us, led us in, in this district. Thank you, O Lord, for the many outstanding uh, jobs that our staff are doing. Thank you for our wonderful teachers, our administrators, all staff here that the job that they're doing, our transportation department and our custodial department and clerical staff for the job that they're doing. Lord, we know that it's in your will that you're helping and leading and guiding this district. Without you, it would not be possible to move forward. So Lord, continue to bless everyone here tonight and help everyone receive a safe trip back home. And please, God, give uh, protection to the armed forces overseas and ha happy uh, Merry Christmas to all individuals here. Thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to introduce to you our pledge leader for tonight, Montserrat, why don't you come on in. Uh, this is Montserrat Reyes. She's a fifth grade student at Woodlake Elementary. She is a member of the National Elementary Honor Society, a past student of the month, and has been on honor roll and had perfect attendance in the past. Her, in her interests are small uh, crafts, drawing, painting, and reading. She's an outstanding student, and we're pledged to have her leading this evening's Pledge of Allegiance. Montserrat. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now for the Texas Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible.
You may be seated. Let's give uh, Montserrat a, a nice hand of applause for a great job. Thank you very much. I'd also like to uh, ask her mother, uh, Sonia Reyes, to stand uh, as well. Thank you for being here. I'd also like to recognize uh, the color guard for this evening, coming from Wagner High School Junior ROTC, Cadet Captain Gracia Martinez, Cadet Staff Sergeant Rebecca Ricondo, Cadet Sergeant First Class Zulima Martinez, and Cadet Captain Jessica Ramon. Now, our first uh, board recognition this evening comes from Olympia Elementary School. Uh, the San Antonio Citywide Chapter of the National Society of Black Engineers took 25 students to the 2013 Regional Convention earlier this month in Wichita, Kansas. Marcus Drake was chosen to compete in the Kid Regional uh, Competition at the conference representing San Antonio. So, Marcus, why don't you come on up here? Now, Marcus won first place. His team won first place in this regional competition. The goal of the Kid Zone is to increase the number of pre-college students exposed to engineering activities and to encourage them to pursue STEM-related career fields. Her principal is Dr. Uh, Dr. Terry LeBlue. So congratulations, Marcus, and you can shake their hands. Let's have the parents stand up, uh, Marcus's parents, the Drakes. Now, our next recognition comes from the United Way. Each year, a select group of high-performance business, uh, businesses and schools take on the challenge to jumpstart the annual campaign by becoming what is called a pace setter. Uh, Mr. David Schrantz uh, is here. Mr. Schrantz, if you would come uh, forward to represent uh, or to present to Dr. Mackey and the board as I explain this designation. The pace setter organizations set the standard for leadership and community support by locking in their increased campaign donations before the end of October. That helps to inspire other organizations to follow their lead when running their own campaign. Now, Judson Independent School District was part of the Paysetter group that helped raise 70% of the campaign's goals. It was all, also one of only two school districts that were part of the Paysetter effort, and JISD had an increase, a 2% increase in funds collected from 2012 to 2013. So thank you very much. I'd also like to recognize Yvette Reyna, who was uh, a part of the uh, JISD United Way campaign as well. She does a lot of things, and she did that as well. The Simon Foundation has selected its uh, 2013 Administrator of the Year, and it recently did this at the Simon Youth Foundation Annual Conference uh, earlier this month. Its selection out of its nationwide network is Judson Learning Academy Principal Brandon Van Vleck.
This award uh, is the culmination of several awards v Mr. Van Vleck has received. Earlier, he was chosen as both the Judson ISD Administrator of the Year and Region 20 Principal of the Year. Uh, since uh, he took over JLA, the graduation rate has increased from an average of 50 a year to more than 100 annually. And over the last two years, 100% of the scholarship recipients are currently enrolled in college. Congratulations, Mr. Van Vleck. All right, our uh, next recognition involves the district's energy conservation efforts. Judson ISD is one of only a handful of Bear County school districts to be recognized by CPS Energy for significant energy saving efforts. Here tonight from CPS Energy is Clayton Cruz, who is here to present to the board Dr. Mackey and Energy Manager Lee Raspberry a sizable rebate check. Uh, the uh, district's demand response conservation goal last summer was uh, at, uh, to save 700 kilowatts off of the load off the power grid. Instead, the district saved 1,000 kilowatts, which is uh, one megawatt. And he has a pretty sizable check to give to the district as well. And it is for? Now, we have, uh, we have a lot of sharp uh, folks that work here uh, for Judson ISD. In fact, they're so sharp that they get asked by other districts and organizations to make presentations on their unique uh, knowledge and abilities. This past September, Judson Education Foundation Executive Director Yvette Reyna was selected by the San Antonio Area Foundation to teach a three-hour event planning class to 32 nonprofit professionals. As a result, registration fees for this class have been donated to the uh, Judson Education Foundation. And uh, she is here, I believe, uh, is uh, Prashama Daly here? Okay. All right. Here to present the check to the district is San Antonio Area Foundation Manager of Training and Support and a proud Judson ISD parent, Prashama Daly. Now, Yvette, don't sit down here because we have something else uh, for you. Now, as you may know, Yvette Reyna wears uh, several hats in the Public Information Office, along with being the Executive Director of Jeff, 
Uh, she also heads up our business partnerships. In an effort to raise funds to support the 2013 Thanksgiving Community Feast, Ms. Reyna submitted a grant application to the BBVA Compass Foundation. The foundation provides charitable grants to qualified nonprofit organizations. And here to present a check to the district is BBVA Compass Manager, uh, actually Vice President Matthew Delgado. Is he here? All right. And this one's a pretty sizable check as well. $7,000. And by the way, don't uh, don't forget this coming Saturday is the Thanksgiving Community Feast. Uh, it's over at Wagner High School from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And last but not least, uh, the Judson ISD Police Department uh, does a very, very important job for our district. Keeping students and, stay, uh, and staff are uh, safe every day is a tremendous job, and they're are some big additions to the department that we are pleased to tell you about. And here to tell the board, Dr. Mackey and everybody here, uh, is uh, JISD Police Chief Teresa Ramon. Chief? Good evening, Dr. Mackey, school board, cabinet members. Uh, we have some great announcements for our police department. I would like to introduce our Jetson ISD Police Command staff. We're going to start off with Lieutenant Robert O'Callaghan. Sergeant Adolfo Hernandez and Corporal Larry Fletcher. We have several goals to achieve from education, management, and leadership skills. We are here to provide a safe and secure environment, and our command staff will be introducing themselves to administration and staff after the Thanksgiving break around our district. You guys want to go and shake hands? Well, we got a few more, a few more. <laughs> I would also like to introduce to you I would also like to introduce to you our first year we have established a elementary liaisons officer, and we are going to build from there with the next couple of uh, years, maybe. And uh, she comes with much patience and works very well with our elementary students. I would like to introduce to you Officer Mary Romero. Now for the big announcement. As of November 1st, 2013, Jetson Independent School District Police Department selected four certified special weapons and tactical SWAT officers to the first school district emergency response team, ERT, in San Antonio, Texas. The Jetson ISD Police Department is taking a proactive step by establishing the ERT team so that we are prepared for all critical situations. With the assistance of Bear County Sheriff's Department and Global Priority Security Training Facility, we were able to provide and prepare each ERT member with professional law enforcement training skills to effectively respond to any active shooter and any emergency situation in our district. As Chief of Police for Judson ISD, my agency is responsible for protecting our most precious resource, our children and our district employees. We want our community to know and understand that seconds count. We are the first line of defense. The ERT officers will participate, um, I'm sorry, the ERT officers will practice the district's crisis management plan that has been implemented by JISD Student Services and will train continuously throughout the next several months, including training with all surrounding agencies that coincide with Judson ISD. So I thank you and I will now introduce them. First one, Officer John Salas.
Officer Roberto Gonzalez. Officer Patrick Worley. And Officer Isosa Ahanare. And just one more announcement. Our Judson ISD officers not only protect, assist, and serve in the community, we also provide community service to nonprofit organizations. This year, for the third year in a row, we were able to assist the Raul Jimenez family, again, that feeds thousands and thousands of people across the, uh, the city of San Antonio. So we tripled our numbers this year. We went from 1,500 cans last year to 6,285 cans of yams. So my understanding is that they needed uh, 4,325 pounds of yams. So my understanding is that we succeeded that amount. So we're good. So we did give awards this year, and it was a battle between a few schools, from dances to coupons. I mean, it was really neat, and I appreciate, we all appreciate everything that everybody's done parents and administrators, students. So this year we have trophies for first place with 2,195 cans is Olympia Elementary. Second place will go to Kirby Middle School with 1,000 cans. And third place, Kitty Hawk Middle School with 800 cans. Oh, I was going to take Steve's step. I think that's all the And those are our recognitions for this evening. Thank you. That is great when we have uh, all those recognitions. And of course, uh, although we don't pay overtime for Jose to make night deposits, so I'm sorry, Jose, you have to go by the bank. We now have uh, recognition, oh, special recognition. I believe uh, we have our Mayor uh, Suarez from Converse. Mayor, thank you for being with us. Any other elected officials? We also, we, we are honored to have with us tonight uh, 
and uh, they're going to be making a presentation, or he's going to be making a presentation, is the president of the Northside Independent School District and president of the Bear County Coalition, Mr. Bobby Blunt. Thank you for being here with us, sir. Thank you. We do have uh, somebody that will be here with us to citizens to be heard. This regular meeting, I'm sorry. This time is provided for citizens to address the board on issues and or concerns. A person may speak one time for a period of three minutes. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. It was the chief, thank you. Uh, board members, at this time we are going to go into the discussion time reports. And we have Mr. Bobby Blunt that's going to give us an update on Bear County School Board Coalition Go Public Campaign. And I believe there was some literature that was put outside for anybody to pick up, right? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Blunt. Just going to bring up a PowerPoint also, but it really is a pleasure uh, to be here with you all this evening. So good evening to our fellow trustees, our, our superintendent, our staff, and um, also our guests. Uh, really looking forward to talking to you. R rather brief, I know we have a full agenda about our uh, Go Public campaign that all of our 15 independent school districts in Barrow County are engaged and involved with. Okay. Okay. Uh, first thing I'm going to make everybody aware of, what I'm going to tell you briefly is what is Go Public? Go Public is meant to be a very positive campaign, a positive message about what's going on here at Judson, what's going on here across Bear County, and that all our school districts are being successful as our students, our teachers, administrators, and staff. And we want to, similar to what you all did for your recognitions this evening, what we want to do is take that outside the boardroom, and for all 330,000 students that we have within Bear County, is provide them an opportunity to have a very positive a very positive recognition for everybody across, uh, across Bear County. So that's basically what Go Public is. Uh, it actually started and established. Oh, okay, we're going to bring that up so everybody can see. Okay. I got to tell you, as a side break, I, I'm an engineer, so I did a very basic background and, and briefing. <laughs> and I went out to uh, uh, Harlandale. And their um, individual, Leslie Garza, said, oh, no, 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 let me take this for you and make, add a little color to it. So. <laughs> okay. so thanks to her, we got a little bit better messaging in terms of uh, what we're showing here. Uh, so again, uh, what we want to do is highlight the transformational things that are occurring every day in the classroom. And what we believe is, and this is all 15 trustees, not all 15 superintendents, and all 99 trustees, if we pull all our resources together, and we also pull our messaging together that will have that impact and make that change that's going across the U.S. as well as Bear County that sometimes sees our public schools as in a negative fashion. We want to change all that around by giving the facts out there and the great things that are occurring. So who is Go Public? We talked about the 15, and all 15, think about it, it's the very first time that we know, not only here within Bear County, but when we talk to other people in Texas and across the nation, where you've had such a great collaboration on such an important message and such an important mission and whatnot. All our superintendents are definitely engaged and involved, and again, all 99 board of boards, as well as the board of trustees themselves, are also support of our Go Public campaign. We have tri chairs. Beyond our school districts themselves, we want to make sure the businesses were also engaged with it. We've got Joe Robles from USAA, Kim Bowers from CST, you may know as Cornerstone, and also Chris Nelson. The Toyota Manufacturing of Texas, they are the ones that came forth and said, we as a business community want to support you also. We believe in public education in Bear County, and we want to be a part of this also. And that's just the start of the list. There's other businesses and organizations here within San Antonio, across Bear County, and actually across Texas that are signing up and joining this campaign also. We have a steering committee made up of superintendents and trustees, 
And they're the ones actually we're meeting on a weekly basis that are going out and putting forth the strategy, then getting forth with our superintendents and trustees across the board to make sure everybody's in sync in terms of what we're doing. And that's one reason I wanted to come out. We're actually going to go to all 15 school districts to make sure all trustees as well as superintendent have the same information and answer any questions that you may have too. Uh, we have a firm that's supporting us from a policy standpoint, and that is the DeBerry Group. The message that we're carrying forward, and again, what we're trying to do, and I'm going to be repetitive, is it really is meant to be here are the great things that are occurring daily in the classroom, across our districts, and across this whole county and whatnot. So it's not meant to be a comparison to other entities. It's not meant to react to anything else that's going on. It's really just saying here are the great things that we're doing. There's the message. Strong communities, as we know here within Justin itself, the great teachers we have. We're also pointing out, if you want to talk about academic rigor, we have it. We have a variety of opportunities for our students. We offer a choice for our students, and we want to point that out and make sure the public's aware of that. Diversity, as you know, we have not only here within, actually, y'all probably the most diverse district I know of uh, within Texas, but all across San Antonio, we have that diversity element also. Engaged active learning for all from middle to elementary to high school. And then the extracurricular activities we offer just cannot be touched. I mean, from our great football history that we have here, to our cheerleading, to our, to our band, to those students that are getting in the chest, you just can't beat what we're offering in terms of extracurricular activities uh, within our school districts. So that's the message that we're putting forth on a positive side. And as you all may know, 70% of individuals within our county are not impacted directly in terms of having students that attend our schools. So that's part of our challenge is we want to hit that 70% in addition to those associated with schools that say, look, we know you may he be hearing one type of message, and sometimes you hear about the negative things going on, but here's the truth of what's going on. The products we have, and I'm very proud to see our Go Public banner hanging up there. Uh, we've got banners. Uh, we've got pins. We've all different types of products, that, magnets that you see on your cars, and we encourage everybody to get those. Uh, we're really handling this in a professional sense. Uh, we went out and actually did a survey within Bear County, one, to get the feedback on what our citizens across the board thought about education in Bear County, and we're using that to help with our messaging. Uh, the website, the website is actually wegopublic.com. It actually has information about all the successes within all the 15 ISDs. And, and believe me, there's an endless number of successes that we all have, so it's just a starting point. But it sort of gives a central location for that particular information. And actually, we're doing the whole social media thing, the YouTube, the Facebook, and everything else across the board. So the idea is to use every communications media possible to spread this message. And the next steps that we're going to have is making sure that we're getting out in dialogue and with all the different uh, individuals and citizens and groups across the board. Publicity received as a date. I'll click over this. We had a great kickoff. You know, we had all 15 of the superintendents there as our kickoff that we had at Jefferson High School and San Antonio ISD. Uh, well covered, a uh, lot of positive press out of that. We had our trustees also represented there. There is so much messaging that's actually going on across the state about this. It's just simply amazing uh, how many different articles and discussion that this is now coming up. So it really has taken great momentum. Our real challenge is going to be we've got a great start is how we continue that. And that, that's going to be sort of my next challenge that I'm going to put before the, uh, for the boards that we have as well as our superintendents. So our upcoming plans that we have, and I have one more slide after this, uh, our biggie is the fundraising part. Uh, we do intend to have, as part of our Go Public campaign, uh, we're hoping in January time frame to have commercials out there that talk about the positive aspects that our teachers, that our students are having within the community uh, as one major uh, media that we want to uh, tie into. Uh, we had some radio coverage that we began, and we'll continue that. Uh, so that's where we need funding to help support that. Uh, for those that heard, our districts did provide some seed money. All 15 ISDs provided seed money just to get things started. But the continuation of this is actually coming from the corporation. So the companies you saw earlier, the USAA, the CST, the Toyota, and other corporate entities as well as private individuals will be the ones that really continue this particular effort. So that's where the funding is going to come from. We want to leverage everything you're doing here. You know, if you've got an event, if you've got a picnic going on, if you're at the halftime of a Spurs game, we want to go public there. So that's the next angle that we're going to work, is how we can influence that and how we can get that message across, not only within our districts, but everything that's going on across Bear County. And we talked about the commercial and radio advertisements. So trustees, this is where I really talk to you. This is what we really need, uh, your support. And this is where I do my sort of Bear County School Board Coalition role in support of this. One is to make sure all our trustees are involved and advocates for it. I mean, this is one objective, one goal, 
that we can all share in common and be supportive of. We've got a lot of different challenges in our districts across the board, a lot of different responsibilities. This is definitely common ground. That's critical to all of us, and we think I have a big impact, not only in terms of our messaging, but all of our kids that we have within our district. The other thing we're asking is if you know of any activities or events or anybody here also that you say, hey, wouldn't it be great as Go Public comes there? And that could be anything going on within a homeowner association. Uh, that could be a rodeo type event. Anything that we can touch that we're going to have community members at is where we want to identify. So if you have those, uh, please let us know. The other major point is make sure we keep the message positive. You know, naturally we're going to continue to be challenged in different ways. Uh, but we want to do is say, you know, our real objective is to get the truth out there, what's occurring daily in our classrooms across the board. So we want to make sure everybody keeps that message positive. Um, I, have, I, have, I know how to get in contact with you all. Definitely this board is supply some of the others I'm talking to. And just sort of a last commercial break that we have is, you know, our next Bear County School Board Coalition meeting, which everybody is always invited to, the Alamo Colleges are going to uh, host that, and everybody here, is, uh, our trustees are definitely invited to attend that also. And I can get you more information about that. So that's sort of my quick version of the briefing. I'll, I'll end with seeing if you have any questions uh, from the board about it. Yeah, go right ahead. Uh, just as a, we have a community uh, Thanksgiving okay. this Saturday, and uh, I think that would be a great opportunity for anyone from the coalition to come out to okay. talk to the public up this Saturday. Okay, great, great. I know it's late notice, but you know, we usually have like about 1,500 people oh, right. Okay. Oh, that sounds great. Let's let's talk about how we can make that happen. Yeah. Tina. Yeah, I'll get that to Jackie. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll work that actually tomorrow. I'll make sure we get uh, material that can provide it, and then we'll see if we can also do. If y'all have suggestions, well, maybe we can at least. For a couple of minutes, say something positive about the Go Public campaign. So, so thanks. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> yes. Just want to say thank you for taking time, and it's a lot of time for you to go around. But um, for those of you that haven't made our coalition meetings, yeah. Mr. Um, Bobby is um, always. The research guy, he keeps everybody informed with emails, and he is the man that has brought the interaction of all these school districts together. And um, you've been doing that for a little while, so we just want to publicly say okay. thank you to you for the time and dedication you've given to Bear County to help us all work together as a major city and county. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Adair. It's, it's a good team we have. Okay, okay well, thank, thank you again. And remember, go public. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Native American Heritage Month proclamation. Whereas the history and culture of our great nation have been significantly influenced by Native Americans and indigenous people, and whereas the contributions of Native Americans have enhanced the freedom, prosperity, and greatness of America today, and whereas their customs and traditions are respected and celebrated as part of a rich legacy throughout the United States, Texas, and our community, and whereas Native American Awareness Week began in 1976 and recognition was expanded by Congress and approved by President George Bush in August 1990, designating the month of November as National American Indian Heritage Month. Now therefore, he, Arnold Salinas, by virtue of the authority vested in, in him as school board president of the Judson Independent School District, Board of Trustees, do hereby proclaim November as the National American Indian Heritage Month in the Judson Independent School District, and urge our community and all our citizens to observe this month with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. In witness thereof, I have hereto set my hand and caused the seal of Judson Independent School District to be affixed this 21st day of November, the year of our Lord, 2013. Okay. All those in favor of the proclamation signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, likewise. And uh, thank you, ma'am. And we will continue this yearly. Uh, next year, we'll do it early. And Mr. Salinas, if I could ask if a copy of that could be provided. Sir, would you stand up? I'm not going to try to butcher your name. Um, would you tell us your name again and who you represent? And we want to thank you, and um, we're asking that a copy of the proclamation be provided um, to you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, now let's go back to item six, discussion, consideration of action items. I believe we start from page 169. A, consider and take action regarding approval to hire an internal auditor TEC 11.170 to analyze the Human Resources Department procedures and practices and recommend to the Board of Trustees measures that will improve efficiency, effectiveness, retention, and recruitment. Uh, Mr. Macias. Motion. Motion by Mr. Macias. Second by Ms. Williams. Discussion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Salinas. I put this item on the agenda for us to take action and consider uh, simply because I started looking at the timeline of um, HR issues. We, we all are aware of uh, recruitment and retention problems that this district has had. In fact, though I think last year we saw an exodus of a lot of our employees leave. Now, some of the reasons are, are um, not because they didn't like Judson ISD, but they moved on for, for other opportunities. Uh, my hope, and I imagine that our, our hope, would be that we try to do what we can to retain our talented employees. I believe that uh, an audit of this measure um, that works with the board could help us in making some of our decisions, especially when it gets closer to budget. So with budget being uh, not so many months away, I thought the information we could actually uh, in engage an internal auditor would be helpful. So I thought the timeline needed to move, be moved just a little bit in terms of when I had projected bringing this to the agenda. Uh, so if there's any questions, I obviously encourage us to have some dialogue about it. Uh, Mr. Flores. Thank you. Uh, you know, we just had an audit done by uh, TASB on our HR department, and we have been in the process of uh, dissecting it and going through it. I, uh, at this time, I don't see where uh, bringing in a firm, especially one that at one time wanted to charge almost $300,000. Uh, we did, uh, at one point, did a study of 
gave them twenty-two thousand dollars, and uh, they gave us this nice big book and reiterated what the people told them. Uh, I can't support this right now, and we had talked about before we did anything like this, we would have to go out for an RFQ. All right, that's all. Mr. Selly. Yeah, I just <clears throat> I agree with what Gilbert said. We had a huge report from the Texas Associate School Boards. It's in the book dated March 2013, saying what we were doing right, what we were doing wrong. Uh, it was much more extensive than what this Gibson consulting firm gave us for $22,000, which they just literally took the information the administration gave it, then did us a song and dance pony show to try to get us to spend $300,000 over five years. Um, <clears throat> I cannot support this in any way, size, shape, or form. It has to be an RFQ if we do anything. Um, this is not how we do business at Judson. We don't put one firm above another, um, you know, at a board meeting. So I will not support this. Ms. Williams. Thank you. Uh, that was actually my question is um, the way this agenda item reads is that we're going to go out for an RFQ. That's where I was trying to clarify is there a specific um, company. That's what I was, my question was. And a uh, follow up to that in terms of um, support for this kind of item, I just, I, I want to make sure that it's understood and I know I'm looking at HR right now, but it's, it, it's such a huge district and huge animal. So there's so many things and so many aspects of it. So I have concerns with that, but it's not. Um, because of any specific problem. It's because of the size of our district and how much is going on. So just as the overstate. But, but if you could answer some of that, Jose, because I know you brought it. Mr. Macia. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Um, nowhere in this uh, item is there a reference to a vendor. So I appreciate your concerns about uh, be, us identifying one. Gibson Consulting did a risk assessment. In my opinion, it was a very thorough risk assessment. But it's only the, the surface. What I'm asking here today is to really go into our HR and try to identify where we're having weaknesses in areas of recruitment and retention and uh, efficiency. So, uh, again, just knowing on black and white that we're losing employees, knowing that we've had some concerns, I think it's time that we institute something that this district has never implemented and exists at Northside, it exists at um, San Antonio ISD, and so those are the districts where we're losing our employees to. So because of that, we as a growing district need to do things um, to, I won't say keep up with other districts, but to be competitive. And if, mean, if it means investing into a third-party assessment, uh, I think that would be helpful. The other problem that, that um, was concerning with the TASB study that you guys alluded to it didn't incorporate the board's involvement. And just to differentiate for the community as well as for my colleagues, an internal audit of this magnitude involves the board in the process of analyzing. We were not part of that HR audit that TASB did. It was administration and TASB. So I think the board and our leadership and our vision, it's important to incorporate us into that process. So what will happen is if we pass this measure today, we will actually hire an internal audit. The board will. We will vote to bring in someone to do this third-party analysis. They will work with our wonderful administrators, but the board will also be a part of this. And together, we will develop strategies that will improve this district. So I truly believe that this is something that's going to take Judson to the next level, and it's something that's, I think, sorely needed. But again, I can also re refer to what Mr. Florida said about uh, us doing our own uh, evaluations. We want to continue them. By, by no means do we want to stop that. But this will help us, I think, be a little more intelligent in terms of what we look at in terms of budget, if it means we need to increase teacher salaries, or administrator salaries. I mean, whatever we need to do, this audit will help us get there. So. Mr. Florida. Thank you. Um, Dr. Mackey, uh, can you tell us uh, what percentage are we losing? Is it any more or less than what we've lost in the past? Um, I've been here starting my seventh year. Uh, this year was the first year that we lost a number of, stu a number of uh, personnel. Uh, but you, you put retirement in there and you put um, discipline action in there and it ran up to like 230, was it 230? About 230 uh, teachers. What's the percentage? Uh, but but it, it, what was the percent? It was like approximately. I'm not going to hold you. Uh, our retention. 
Our retention numbers are approximately at 17 percent, so we are well within range of, of most school districts across but, the state. But this was the so highest. This, this was the highest ever at 17 percent in the mm -hmm. seven years I've been here, and it, it goes up and down. And we've been as low as maybe eight, nine, ten, eleven, nine, ten, eleven percent. Mm -hmm. One year we were very, very low on that. Uh, two things that, that I'm going to recommend in September, not in September, but in January, that all staff get a 3 percent raise, so we want to keep up with that. Uh, that's one thing that, we're gonna, that I'm going to recommend to this board in January. Mm -hmm. that's so we know we have the funds to do that, and that's going to be my recommendation on that. And as far as the TASB study, uh, I was, I, uh, this administration had no involvement. I told everybody to stay out of that and let them do a true study So without our, without mm -hmm. our input. So. I made people stay out of that input. So whatever they did, I don't want to say administration guided or said that, call TASB and find out we did not get involved in that. Mm -hmm. I was staff. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah, they had to no, they had to they had to interview. We didn't get involved in it. No no, they just they interviewed all kinds of staff. It wasn't us. Can uh, yeah, yeah, also just, uh, but I didn't interview me. You know, so I, I can tell you who all they yeah. interviewed. Also, isn't it true that a number of districts are coming to us and looking at what we're doing in regards to our programs that we're running in HR? In, throughout, the entire, throughout the entire city, I was at a meeting last night, throughout the entire city, our prep program, our, uh, Ms. Robinson, our, what programs, looking at? Our, well, I'm talking about HR. Oh. I'm talking about, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, oh. I'm talking about what HR, people from different districts that have come to Justin to see what we're doing and when our staff let, goes out to other people and they can see how we compare. Let, let me say this. As far as our HR department, and we visited like six districts, and we go to visit districts to find out what they're doing in HR and see we're missing out, guess what they do? They call us and want to learn from us the things that we're doing in Jetson ISD because we're doing uh, great things in our department. We're updating our systems, which a lot of systems, and I'm not going to name schools and embarrass them, they're antiquated. They still have wall charts and doing their, their things on the wall in which we computerize and our stuff. So we're, we're, uh, we're, moving up, we're moving up on a lot of that stuff, yes. Thank you. Ms. Ager. Thank you, Mr. Salinas. Um, just have a couple of things. One, when this law came out um, authorizing school district to have an uh, internal auditor, uh, Mr. Elizondo is aware that I strongly encouraged our district to join the bandwagon and to have one in place. And it was determined that we didn't feel that we needed one, that we had enough safeguards in place. So um, for me, um, I always think it's good to have um, an audit. Um, I did talk to TASB last year, Dr. Mackey, and they said that the services they performed for us was not an audit and that um, it was where mainly they just reviewed our processes and they received information from Ms. Howard on how we did things. She provided them with written documentation, but they did not audit our district and they did not talk to any of our employees or any of those things. Um, so that was the second thing. We had, a, we had a review, but they said it was not an audit. Okay, well, I talked to Jim Crow. Can we explain that? Absolutely. Um, as part of TASB's review of our department, they conducted audits of our records, um, our database management systems. Um, interviews were conducted with employees throughout the district as well as every member of the human resources staff. Um, they reviewed our procedures, um, our practice, um, our uh, checks and balance systems that we have in place for, for our documentation, um, reviewed our uh, programs for legal compliance. Um, it was a quite an extensive review of the department. Um, it, it involved the process of submitting um, written documentation. So we went through a, what, what is called a paper review prior to them coming. Um, and then when they were on location, they confirmed and verified that those processes were actually implemented in place and in use. Um, as far as actual auditing, um, they did review personnel records, um, financials, 
uh, payroll processing. I mean, they, they looked quite extensively um, at our, our actual um, practice in, in the department. Um, their interviews were uh, included employees throughout the district, um, both Wait, administrative and So we and don't take support. up too much time, time on this? Um, when we come back from Thanksgiving, I'll get with Dr. Mackey. I'll come up at a time convenient, and um, we can do a speaker call with um, Jim Grove. Um, don't want to spend, spend a lot of time with that. The um, other thing, though, um, I wanted to address with Gilbert, it's not my understanding that we're hiring Gibson Consulting. I thought that these were just put in here to show us who we've had. And I'll support an RFQ because I agree with Mr. Salyer, we need an RFQ. So I didn't think we were hiring anyone tonight. I thought this was just for us to decide, you know, are we going to look at HR with an outside entity? That's all I thought this was. So if there's anything more than that, um, I need to understand and have some clarity on the motion. Mr. Foyle. Well, Mr. Dare, if you look at it, discussion of action items, what do we do with action items? We vote on them, right? We're voting on an RFQ for this purpose. And I'll be happy to make an amendment to make sure that's what it is. It doesn't say that in the original thing, though. Well, this was put in by Dr. Mack. This? 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 Okay. I didn't support this last time, and I doubt if I'll support it this time. The thing is, we are, how much money are we going to spend? That's what I'd like to know. How much did we put money away in the budget, didn't we not, for an audit? How much did we put away? 75. 75,000. Do you think that's going to cover? I don't either. I, I've got the floor, Mr. Dare, please. Point of order, please. Thank you. He wants to finish on the thing is, we don't know how much they're going to charge. We're going to go off for RFQ. Yes, I'll go with that. But as far as going with right now, voting to do it, I will not. Mr. Selly. Yeah. First, <clears throat> on the first page one, two, and three, it specifically states what they looked at and on page four, it tells background review process, actually who they talked to. They named it, okay? So next, <laughs> we've beating this horse of why people leave Judson. Huh? Okay, it's page 217, which is page one, 218, page two, 219, page three, and 220, page four. It's right in there what they looked at. Second, we beat this horse again about why people leave Judson. We all got the data this summer, remember? We all got the breakdown, right, Ms. Howard? We requested that and everybody got a why people left Judson and it was because they were moving, they were sick, they retired or whatever. It wasn't this big mass exodus that people were unhappy with us, right? Okay, I'm just, okay. <clears throat> Second of all, third, I guess, okay? What's the process? We have no process of this board. Who, how do we make the selection of what firm? You say the board is going to hire this auditor. We have no process to hire an auditor. We have to have a process before we can hire somebody. Who's going to be the interview committee? Who makes the final decision? We have no process. This is, this is totally out of what we do. Okay? You want to hire somebody and have the board hire them? How do we do that? What are the processes? We can't do this without a process of how to do it. Thank you, Mr. Sellier. Number one, I will not support something that we're going to hire somebody permanently. Hire an auditor, come and do the audit, you're finished, yes. Number two, definitely we need to have an RFQ because if we do an RFQ, then that will tell us whoever puts in the paperwork as to how much they're going to charge. We allocated 75000 once we get the RFQ, we can get names uh, and how much it's going to cost, and then we can take it from there. Um, Mr. Uh, on an RFQ, that's just review of qualifications. That's not review of the money. But you want an RFQ, 
Fine, then we. Okay, sir. RFP would be fine, no problem. Mr. Sutton. Yeah, again, you know, what, what are we looking for? What are the qualifications of the firm we want to hire? What are, is their role in this process as an auditor working for the board? We have none of that. How can we say, okay, let's go and say, okay, we got $75,000 to spend. What do you think the people's going to bid on this $75,000, right? Exactly what they're going to do. That's what they all do. Look at the construction of the elementary school. They're all within 200000 bucks because they knew what we could spend. We don't, have, we don't have the qualifications, what we're looking for, to even put out an RFQ. Yeah, thank you. Those are all good questions, but it, it just reinforces the fact that um, we have never done this before. And I've mentioned that if you want to break the cycle, you need to do something different. And we do the same thing over and over again, and we have the same issues. They may be cyclical, but they're the same issues. We really need to step it up. The questions you have are, are um, valid ones, but just like we hire a superintendent, we have the ability per this Texas, uh, Texas Education Code to employ and hire an internal auditor. My assumption would be that we would then interview, just like the superintendent, a series of internal auditors that we would then vote for as a board to move forward with. So the thing is, this isn't, um, we're not the only district that's done this. If we end up moving forward today, I would imagine our superintendent would then contact some of the districts that are employing internal auditors and ask, what did we do, do to move forward with this? But before we can even get there, we need to actually vote to see if we want to do this so that Dr. Mackey has those marching orders to get us an internal auditor so that we can look it over. So th that, that should clarify things. Uh, um, but anyway, just want to put my two cents in. We say there. Dr. Mackey, may I address uh, Mr. Ashmore? Sure. Mr. Ashmore, since you are our authority on this area, um, I'm sure you're aware of what the code says, that the board can have um, an internal auditor. What yes. I would like to know is, as Mr. Flores spoke, um, is it an RFQ? Is it an RFPTZXY? What is it? <laughs> well, Ms. Adair, I think that if I were to put something together, I would probably look at it as um, we determine what our need is. If it's a review or audit of the Human Resources Department, we would probably build a package and issue it as a request for proposals or an RFP so that we would have a, a final product that we want back. If we were looking to hire an individual to come in and do reviews, then we would issue an RFQ for, for the individual. If we think about our internal or our external audit that is conducted every year, we, uh, we issue an RFP for that service, but if we hired one accountant, it would require a request for qualifications or an RFQ. So that's the deciding factor. If we're looking for one product, the results of the review or the audit itself, we would issue an RFP to do it. If we're not looking at hiring a permanent employee, but um, that was a good, uh, good example, like we hire our external auditors. Um, you hire them with an RFP? Yes, ma'am. With one project, the end project in mind, we know exactly what it is that they're going to provide for us. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Ashman. I would like to move um, to make an amendment to the motion as follows. I don't want to get it right, Richard. <clears throat> Consider and take action regarding approval to hire a contractual um, internal auditor, TEC 11170, to analyze the Human Resource Department procedures and practices and recommend to the Board of Trustees measures that will improve efficiency, effectiveness, retention, and recruitment. Um, by issuing a RFP. Did that sound right, Dr. Mackey? Did I get all the right language in there? Consider and take action regarding approval to hire, I inserted the word contractual to ensure it's not, we're not talking about an employee, 
contractual internal auditor, everything remained the same until the end after recruitment by issuing an RFP. Or I could say by um, instructing the superintendent to obtain an RFP. Is that better, Gilbert? Or are we asking for the RFP? Okay. By what now? By issuing an RFP. That's good? Okay. So, Jackie, I inserted contractual after and, and then I inserted by issuing an RFP. Thank you, Jackie. That was my amendment. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Seven. Yeah. Again. Again, you're telling the superintendent to go out and get information to hire someone that's going to work for, a bo for the board. That in of itself is a contradiction. We don't have any criteria for any of this set how we're going to do this. We're the, we're the Judson Keystone cops right now how we always do it, okay, how this board always jumps into something without all the data or a plan to do it. This is going to be an absolute fiasco. Yep. Mr. Yes, uh, I won't go as far as Keystone Cops, but I would say that I think we're putting the cart before the horse here. I think that if we as a board instruct Dr. Mackey just to go, you know, just to put out an RFP, an RFQ, that doesn't require board action. We can, we can ask him to do that as, you know, no, well, but yeah, but we're hiring somebody. You are authorizing the hiring of this position, and I do not want to do that. I agree with Mr. Salyer as far as we don't have any kind of process as a board policy on how to do this. If this is something the board is doing, then we have to have a policy in place how we do this. And we do not have that. I, when this first came out, when we uh, passed the budget, I had sent an email, I think, to Mr. Salinas and maybe Dr. Mackey too, saying we need to have a process on how to do this. And that, more than anything, needs to be put first and then we'll say, okay, now we go out for an RFP, RFQ, whatever, and get that information. Then we interview the people if we want to do. But uh, this, the way this motion reads, it's not, it's not doing that. It's, it's already, you're already authorizing to hire somebody. And then I can see it coming back. Well, we already authorized it. We don't have to vote on that, you know. Now, can't support this either. Okay, this is my last um comment um, on the amendment um, I, I hear what I hear what you're saying Gilbert but we're not going to go out and do the RFP and we already have procedures and policies on how to issue an RFP this isn't any different than anything else that we do um, and other districts do this I'm trying to find a compromise for us where we don't hire a permanent employee which is what the law says that we can do. We don't have a procedure in place for that. So what if we, you know, have the motion that we want to hire a person? We'll do the same thing like everybody else that we hire. We'll follow our personnel rules. We'll get employees and job descriptions. Excuse me, no. We take the recommendations of the superintendent for who we hire. We do not say, okay, we're going to interview them and we're going to hire them. We don't do that. This is a different procedure here, Judy. We are talking about a person that's going to report directly to the board. And that requires an action for us to be able to say, this is what we're doing, and this is why we're doing this. Well, the Texas Education Code, the law was passed several years ago, and it's in the motion, Section 11170, says, if a school district employs an internal auditor, the Board of Trustees shall select the internal auditor, and the internal auditor shall report directly to the board. Exactly. There are employees besides the superintendent. There are employees, and then we, because we don't have a procedure for that. It's, it's not. Who does the selection process? Who interviews who? Who is the final decision? Well, let me ask. Let me ask the superintendent. Dr. Mackey, 
Um, are you able to obtain the information from every other school district in San Antonio, Texas, that has not only one, but several internal auditors that they have hired and that report directly to the board in order to provide advice and guidance to the board on this RFP and how we will go about doing this? Or are you um, needing the board members to go out and contact other board members and ask them how to do it? Honestly, I think you can do this, Dr. Mackey. Ms. Adair, I will do whatever the board directs me to do. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Adair. I'm done. Ms. Adair. <laughs> yes, sir. We have that information, ma'am. I had requested that information. Uh, we have well, yeah. I, okay, that's right. We're, we're on the amendment. Right. No, we're, we're on the amendment. Okay. Any? Oh, Mr. Macias. I'll give you the information in a minute. Mr. Macias. Certainly. Um, again, this is, this is new. It's not a bad thing because it's new. But uh, uh, Dr. Mackey, I would like to address Mr. Ashmore again. Um, Mr. Ashmore. And um, when, and, and go back with me. I wasn't here when we hired Dr. Mackey. So when we hired Dr. Mackey. He wasn't here. I hired, I hired him. You hired Mr. I hired him. You can talk to me and Jose. Okay. Well, well don't go anywhere. I should, uh, well, Mr. Can, can I say something? Maybe I can help you, Mr. Macias. Okay. Well, that's fine, Mr. Ashmore. I'm fine. Can I say something? Go ahead. And let me put Mr. Elizondo on the spot. Mr. Elizondo, <laughs> I know you don't have a contract, and we're going to take that one away from you. No, Mr. Elizondo, I wouldn't trade him for any business manager in the state of Texas. However, um, Mr. Elizondo was the internal auditor. How many years in Judson? I did internal audit for about six years. He did the internal audit for Judson for six years before he was promoted. He was the internal auditor. Now, I, I think everybody have good, valid, you know, how we're trying to get to where we want to go. And what I'm trying to see is that this board wants to find the best way to enhance the HR department. Is that it? Okay, now, and to enhance the HR department, this board would like to see us find better avenues in order to retain qualified employees for the district. Now, if that's the purpose of it, I'm looking at goals or principles and things that we can do. So what I, what I will do for this just what I will do is to come just get call other districts, find out what their goals and principles, and information about their job description, uh, their what what they do to do an internal audit for other for their for their, their district and bring that back to this board so that you all and then then get with Mr. Ashmore and put a RF um, P together so this board can interview the project uh, for an, a contractual person and then we can move we can move forward with the HR department with, with this board wishes whatever y'all want to do yeah. before you before you um, any additional response on that I did have a point why I wanted to talk to mr. Ashmore find out what we did before um, your recommendation is good, but I'm going to say something. The reason why this is on the agenda is because we've had these discussions. We've already been given job descriptions from Northeast about internal auditors. Your recommendation is not to move forward with an internal auditor. I mean, I've been in these rooms with you, and you said, no, we don't need that. We'll do something with TASB. So at this point, and my hope is that we need to do something more. We disagree on this issue. That's okay. We can have disagreements. But... I feel that we need board action to kind of force that because I've already seen your recommendation. It's not to have an internal auditor of this magnitude, and I respect that. That's why if we're going to move forward with it, it needs to be by board vote. Yeah, I agree with that. Agree and with and that, that way it puts you at least a clear direction of what this board des desire is. And then, of course, everything else you mentioned about finding out how it works, it's great. But at least you have our blessings moving forward that that's what we, we need to do. We, we still have an amendment that we need to vote on? Okay. No further discussion. Let's go ahead and vote on the amendment. Okay. 
I would like to read it, Mr. Salinas. Yes. Consider and take action regarding approval to hire a contractual internal auditor, TEC 11.170, to analyze the Human Resource Department procedures and practices and recommend to the Board of Trustees measures that will improve efficiency, effectiveness, retention, and recruitment by issuing an RFP. Okay, go ahead and let's vote. Motion. Amendment carries four to three. Now we're back to the motion, right, ma'am? Yes, sir. Now we can vote in the motion. Same thing. Four to three. Motion carries. Uh, by the way, I was going to tell the board, yes, I did secure some information from the school districts uh, via the uh, legal, and they did provide some information. So I told Jackie to run copies, and uh, she'll be given the copies to you. So between now and by the time we do the RFP or whatever, then maybe you'll have some more questions. Jackie, when you have those ready, if you would give them to the board so they can take them with them, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Item uh, B, consider and take possible action regarding approval to promote fraud and abuse hotline toll-free number in all Judson ISD publications to include online e-communications and email signatures. Mr. Macias. Se Motion by Ms. Williams. Second. Second by Mr. Macias. Go ahead, sir. Discussion. Yes, sir. I, this item is on the agenda for... Um, I guess to address the, uh, I guess, weaknesses we have with the fraud and abuse hotline. I do believe it's been a deterrent. I think it's helped our district. We've had some reports turned in. I failed to ask you, Dr. Mackey, for a full report of the uh, fraud and abuse that has been called in to date. But uh, that way we can kind of have that for our, our information. But I don't think that enough of our employees or the community know that there is a fraud and abuse hotline. The previous method was there was a fraud and abuse link on a website. You go to the website, and it's still on the website, but it takes three click-throughs to get there. Uh, I, I'm just amazed at how many of our 3,000-plus employees are unaware of this fraud and abuse hotline. We're not spending a great deal of money, but I think it is such a great tool to help combat any fraud and abuse in this district that we need to make it more uh, accessible and readily available. And so this agenda item is to direct administration to use our e-communication means to promote that number. And that means putting it on the J blog, report fraud and abuse, here's the 800 number. Uh, e-communications in terms of your signature on an email could have it for all employees. I just want to make sure that we're letting it known, be known that there is a way to turn in uh, any potential fraud and abuse through a tip line. And if we can do that and employees know it's accessible to them, I think it will help tremendously be even a greater deterrent to ensure that we manage our tax dollars appropriately. Mr. Salyer. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm all for transparency, but putting it on every individual signature block, I think that's a little overkill. It's out there. People know it's out there. How many, can anybody tell me how many interactions, reports we've had since it started? Mr. Gonzalez, how many reports since what was the day we started this and how many have we had and how many found it? We we started last October in okay. two thousand uh twelve. It's been a year. So it's been a year. Year to date we've had thirteen reports. Thirteen reports. Yes, sir. How many found it? None of them. None of them. They've all been either resolved through discussions with departments or none of them uh, could be substantiated. I mean, I agree Jose. it's only twelve hundred bucks, it's not a lot of money, but I, I, I'm not going to vote for this if it just says signature blocks. We, that's, that's overkill on everybody's signature block. That, that's implying that we have something wrong in Judson, which we don't. So I won't vote for this as long as it says signature blocks and all that. Mr. LaFoya. I think this falls in the same block as employees coming to meetings, not employees, but people coming to meetings. You can 
drag them there, offer them food, they still won't come. The thing is, if the people see something wrong, they know where to go to report it. We can talk to them till we're blue in the face. If there's nothing wrong, there's nothing to report. The thing is, if we start going out there and saying, you've got to report, you've got to report, and that's more or less what we're saying when we put it on their signature block. They're going to start looking around saying, boy, there must be something wrong. And they're going to flood him with stuff that nothing. It's absolutely trash what they're putting into him. Now we've had 13 reports. Nothing has been substantial against the district. So that tells me right there that what we're doing, we're doing right. And we don't need to do any more of this stuff. The people don't know now. They don't want to know. Thank you. Ms. Williams. Thank you. I'm, I'm first and foremost, I'm very thankful that we've had 13 and only 13 reports. And I'm even more thankful that they've all been on since, even no sense in, or no truth behind them. I'm really thankful for that. But I don't think it's, it's kind of hard to measure what that number means. You know, 13 it might sound like a lot to some people, might not sound like a lot to others, but it's hard to say when we don't know how many people know about the actual reporting. So um, with such a, a, a minimal cost, I don't see why we can't put it out there in more, more ways to reach more people, whether it's employees, family members um, of our students that see this. There's, if we've got nothing wrong, then it's going to come back and show us that we've done nothing wrong. So I would support this at this time. Thank you. Any other discussion? We can go ahead and vote, Dr. Oh, go ahead, sir. We have an amendment. Second. We, no, no, we have an amendment. We second. Now we need to vote on the amendment. Discussion? I have a question on what that means. Can you explain? Um, I wasn't sure what it meant in the first place. Um, except that it was a line that says we have a hotline number. So can you tell us? I, I, I just had the only thing I could recall. Um, when you send out emails, Miss, can I address Miss um, yeah. oh, Howard? Miss <laughs> <laughs> Howard, when you um, when you send out emails, do you have that little um, blip at the bottom that says um, this is confidential if you receive this in the air or some some something? Right. We have a the civil rights statement as well as the confidentiality statement um, on our. Communications. However, that's administration's communications. So those would be emails coming out of our office. The, the teachers are not required to put that on their email. Okay. So then I have a question for Mr. Macias. So what email signatures were you referring to? Honestly, really no, honestly, what I was thinking was the what Ms. Howard had mentioned and also the uh, legal. When we get legal emails, there's a disclaimer at the bottom of that email that, that says, hey, you can't do A, B, or C. Uh, don't. So to put that at the bottom, uh, maybe email signatures was, was inappropriate, but to put it at the bottom of an email, I think wouldn't hurt anything, but it would give at least the opportunity for someone to realize there is a toll-free number to report fraud and abuse. So you're talking about just administration, like Ms. Howell just talked about, I or would, are you talking about every teacher, every just an email? Well, I mean, if we want to market it for a little while, I think we need to be um, think big rather than small. But um, at this point, if we do it on the J blog, which um, – Mr. Linscombe's done a wonderful job with that and put it up at the top of the header with the toll. I mean, that's good, too, I mean, for the community as well. So as long as we're doing something. Okay, so you would be okay if, if you just put it on the online J blog and we don't put it on any, any other email? Uh, we'd give it a try. We could always talk about it or bring it back if necessary. Okay. Mr. Williams? Mr. Florida. What is the cost of promoting? 
e communications don't cost anything. Just want to clarify one thing real quick. When a minute ago, Mr. Macias, when you mentioned that, in case you're not aware, is that it took three clicks to get to that. It is on our homepage. It is on our front page of our homepage. One click at the very bottom. It just is says, the 800 number physically on it that says homepage? Report it. You yeah, you there. have to click. I, w I want it to be right there when you look at that homepage. 1-800 toll free, but also even on the J blog at the header. It, it, you have to click to get there. Let me, oh, sorry. let me clarify. I don't remember hitting my vote button, so was this? Yeah, I think this was preset. Yeah, you have to reset it because I didn't vote yet. Okay, hold on. So let's just reset, yeah. Okay, just clarify what we're voting for right now. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, vote for the amendment of Mr. Sellier. Okay. Amendment passes, majority. Thank you. Now we're back to the, to the original motion. Let's go ahead and vote on the original motion plus the amendment. Yes, yeah, we already voted. With the amendment, correct. Thank you. Motion carries. Yes, sir. Now, now you can, you, you're, it's e-communications. If it's JBlog is one, whatever form of e-communications. Sir, as clarification, e-communications would still consider uh, include every email communication issued in this yeah. letter. And, and I'll leave that to you. The emails I'm fine with, but e-communications in the J-Blog is an excellent example of one. That would need to be specific, sir, because we use our email system to communicate with our staff on a daily basis. Any announcements of a, a HR event or activities throughout the district, is that an e-communication? That It's too broad, sir. Um, Mr. Salinas, can I speak to Dr. Yes. Mackey? Yes. Dr. Mackey, we just sat here and specifically said email signatures are excluded. And all e-communications are your J-blog. They're the list of the communication things that you sent us in our board book, that little Monday thing that goes to them, the other little thing that goes to Those are the teachers or whatever y'all send out. And those are e-communications. He knows what the e-communications. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. No, no, but Mr. Lipscomb, you're clear on what the e-communications are, right? Because you're the one that's going to do it. <laughs> you got good people, Dr. Good. Thank you, Mr. Lipscomb. You're so kind to Okay, wait, we, we both, okay? Okay, Dr. Mackey, is that a clear? Thank you, sir. C, consider and take possible action regarding approval to create a formalized three-year plan of addressing and improving SAT scores within the district. Mr. Macias. Motion. Motion, Motion by Ms. Adair. Second. Second by Mr. Macias. Discussion. I just realized that no one else put action items except for Ms. Williams. Oh, my goodness. But so let's move on. So we'll let's try move to be on, quick. Sir. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Macias. Okay. Uh, we put in a, an initial uh, Princeton review for SAT, and, and thank you, Dr. Mackey and Ms. Robinson, for, for seeing that through. And I think that um, I've had some discussions with Judson High School and with Wagner, and I, I think that uh, they're, they're, um, they're excited about the potential the program has, and I think it can help some people, and, and we want our kids, we want them to be successful. 
So what I'm proposing here is that I, I know that we have a plan, and I'm not saying that we don't. This agenda item, I'd like to have a very formalized three-year plan, a step, if you will, on how we're going to achieve a certain benchmark. I'd like us as a district to identify what that benchmark is in SAT scores so that we can make that our goal to raise SAT scores across this district in three years. Um, it's a great accountability measure. It actually will lend some continuity to our strategies so that we're not just figuring out this isn't working, let's try something else next year. A three-year plan, I think, is enough time to see how and what we need to do to make adjustments, but it needs to be formalized. We need to be committed as a district to a certain direction. Um, I see Sylvan Learning Center out there. That could even be something that we incorporate. It doesn't always have to be Princeton Review. Anything that gets us to that end game is what I think is important. And so this, I didn't put in Princeton Review on this item because I want to be broad enough to look at all avenues possible and include that in the formalized plan. Now, I don't know how long it'll take to do this. I'm not expecting it next month or next, but I do want the board to know that we collectively want to see SAT scores improved in this district. We want a three-year timeline. We want a benchmark on what that score needs to be or would like to be, and then we'd like to put in all the additional strategies. I think, if anything, it would reaffirm to not only our employees but to our community a commitment that we're staying the course on a plan for three years minimum. And so I, th I think it's important that we give that affirmation today. That's why this is on there. Mr. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree with you. We need to improve scores. But Dr. Mackey, I asked Ms. Robinson a question. What, what is our plan right now for improving SAT scores? Okay. That's I just what I want to clarify one right. thing because right. we'll do whatever again. Whatever right. you, right. the board collectively wants us to do, we'll make happen. But I want you to understand one thing. Under the brand new accountability system, it is SAT participation that you get rated on. Because the goal of the state of Texas is to try to get as many kids as possible participating in the test. As a curriculum committee, of which Ms. McKinney's on it and Sonny, we looked at Irving and other school districts that have done this successfully, and what they did was put in the SAT day program. I'm going to tell you their scores dropped dramatically year one because they came in and tested every kid. Um, however, this year on the accountability, they got real high marks because they're testing every kid. I don't mind making a plan to get better scores, but we, we have to balance that with if we do increase participation, there'll be an initial dip. Now, Irving by year three has gone up, just so you know. But it did take a two-year dip before they raised back up because they included so many children. And I just want that on record. It is participation that we're held accountable for. Uh, thank you, Ms. Rowe. I mean, in, I, I agree with you 100%. Well, you know, we need something, but... As Mark Twain, Samuel Clements said, lies, damn lies, and statistics. You know, the, the state's stacking the deck against us. Uh, you know, you spread the pool, people are going to take it, probably, I won't say shouldn't take it. I think every kid should take it. But, again, it's accountability of what we ask. Um, I think a better plan would be, you know, increased participation can we cut our? Can we populate our kids that take SAT? Do we populate we, but you them? You will budget it for that. Pardon? So this spring, because you right. graciously budgeted we'll for that, we will buy the contract because the test is in the fall. Right. So right. we couldn't have done it off last year's right. budget. So we budgeted for it so we can purchase it for next October. Every every senior will be taking it during the day at school for free. But all when the conversation that came around that when at budget time was inspect a dip initially. Um, right. And yes, it did increase, and they got way more kids identified for college because students that weren't driving and uh, in, enrolling themselves and couldn't afford it were now given an opportunity. Jose, if I could make a suggestion, and I know what your intent is, and I actually agree with it, but I think our real goal is to get more kids to take the SAT identify them as college eligible and get them in college. I think looking at raw scores in the next three years, we're going to fail miserably if we just, you know, plan on this. I mean, I think the, the goal here is identify more kids that are eligible to college and get them the counselors to get them in college. 
Thank you, Mr. Salinas, and thank you, uh, Ms. Robinson, um, because that's what I wanted to say. Um, that's any program. Um, if we want involvement, we have to be prepared that there are going to be many students that are not prepared and have not been challenged, um, and thus the low scores on the star. As we raise the bar, then it'll take us a little while to raise the level of, of achievement. And even the confidence level, um, I have boys and I had to drag them kicking and screaming to take the SAT um, because they didn't want to take it and they didn't think they were going to do good. But um, I think as a board, as long as we are aware that the more students we test, the scores average will drop tremendously. Yes. But for me, uh, Mrs. Salyer, that's fine. We've got to get started. Let's get them tested, let them find out where they are, and then that'll tell us what we need to do. And by year three, we should have improved um, all of our college readiness of our students. And so I will support this. Um, I don't think that there's any negative evaluation of Dr. Mackey attached to um, the scores dropping. And so let's be clear on the record. We know that the scores will drop uh, when we start testing more students. But it, my understanding of this motion that we want to have a plan to improve it, and it actually puts us one step ahead of the state. The state's just saying, hey, go test everybody. But we're saying we're going to test them, and we're going to look at how we're going to help them raise their scores. Mr. Macias. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out, Ms. Adair. And, and, and I did fail to mention another real important component about this. The component is alignment. We've talked about it in here, and, and we want to be aligned in this college readiness strategy. But what we don't want to do is not look at our middle school students. I do suspect that we need to incorporate them in that same SAT or college readiness, and we're doing a lot of that now. But I want to make sure that all of our middle schools are aligned with our high schools in that progression. And again, that's, that can be incorporated in this very comprehensive strategy of what we're doing to ensure we get to this next mark. And um, that, I just want to make sure I put that on record. Alignment is very critical, not to focus purely on juniors and seniors, which I think the accountability ratings by having us test these students, that, that's what they're saying, test your juniors and seniors. I want to think further out our sophomores, our freshmen, eighth grade, and make sure that we're looking at a strategy of getting them college ready so by the time they're in high school, they will perform better. But anyway, thank you. I think I understand what y'all are saying. And I, I appreciate that it, we may have additional or initial dips in scores, but that's part of getting better. That's part of the process. So I still think that, you know, I would be supportive of this, that it's, it's in the interpretation on how you interpret it. So yes, I understand that scores will go down, but that's part of the deal. Um, if we just wait three years to watch the scores go up by incorporating just more people testing, I think we're losing time and focus on how we can be improving simultaneously. So we, we know that we're, our scores may dip. We should be moving forward and encouraging more to take the test. But let's also work on how can we improve the overall score. So that's, you know, I think that's where we're at. But thank you. I just want to say, I, I didn't want you to misinterpret me. We have a plan. I totally agree with you. We want scores up. I just wanted on record that when we come in next year and we make this plan, there's going to be an initial dip. Our plan is to go back up like Irving. The second thing I want to say is we bought the whole suite. So we are testing every eighth grader with the college board piece that feeds PSAT and then feeds the SAT. And they've realigned how they score. So SAT is a 700, PST is a 70, and readiness is a 7. So you know that that's how it's aligned. So we're now having the full suite so that we are, Mr. Macias, also testing in middle school. Ms. Robinson, what we need to do is make this give the board a form, the plan. formal process. I love process. the plan idea. I'm not yeah. against it. Yeah, we, got, we, got a, we, we can give them the plan. We have the we plan, have, I'll give and it it's, it's our fault if the board is not up to date on the plan. So yes, we, we will I get agree. them the plan. We'll take care of that. Mr. Flores. 
Thank you. Uh, yeah, that was my question. Yeah, yeah. We have a plan, a three-year plan. I don't understand the, the purpose of this motion. If we have a plan, we're going to give, you know, we have to give them the time to get it done. You know, uh, what happens in two years when the state changes something? You know, because chances of that happening are pretty high. Uh, and so they have to adjust their plan. The plan has to be a, a living type thing that it has to, it has to work within the system that we need it to work with. You know, so, you know, I, I just don't understand the purpose of this motion. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, we're ready to vote on the motion. Five yes, two no. Motion carries. D. Consider and take action regarding approval to formalize a plan for the board to review and consider that will provide two-year contracts to the top 25% of teachers within the district. Mr. Macias. Motion. Motion by Mr. Macias. Second by Ms. Williams. Discussion. Mr. Macias. Yeah, this is a, an item that I think we've had some discussions about. I think informally we've been supportive and then we've kind of backed off. And uh, I, I haven't seen, I've seen some preliminary data from administration regarding this and, and we've had discussion. But I'll tell you what, uh, that, that's getting us nowhere. I, I want something that's a viable plan for the board to consider. I'm not saying let's vote on it, doing it now. I just want a very viable plan for this board to see how this could work if we implemented it as an incentive for our teachers. And if you're seeing a theme today, it's employees, it's retention, it's recruitment. This would help, I believe, tremendously the, with the morale of our employees, our teachers, I should say. But we need something. And uh, I'm just not satisfied with the answers I've had in the past. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to ask here formally that the board support having a very um, viable plan built in so that we can review and consider in a future time for action. And ideally, the plan would need to be uh, before March because we start doing t teacher contracts and I want to make sure that if we're going to pull the trigger on this, we have ample opportunity to, to look at these, uh, the potential. Mr. Flores. Thank you. Uh, you know, we've had multi-year contracts in the past, you know, we've had and uh, I believe when Dr. Mackey came in and uh, we did a, we went back to a one-year contract um, I can see you know you say the top 25 percent you know will get a two-year contract that's what that's what you're saying in this okay and let's say you know those are the ones that are uh, highly recruited by other districts those are the ones that are uh, you know are going to be looking around because you know they look at people other districts look at people and say well look at their scores they look at scores and they want those people in there that's what we do we look at what people's scores are and we and we approach that I think you know and, and my wife was on a two I think they had a three-year contract or at one time um, you know, when would you evaluate them? Would you evaluate them every year? Would you, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, something like that. I don't know. What do you do, Dr. Mackey? I mean, is Yeah, but you're giving a two-year contract. Now, do you evaluate them after the first year or no? You know, it doesn't matter because they got a contract. It doesn't matter how they evaluate that. You know, but uh, so I, I think that we have to allow the administration to be able to, you know, I, I just don't think we ought to go to a multi-year contract personally. Not that. Mr. Sally. Yes, Dr. Mag, I want to talk to Ms. Howard yeah. there. Ms. Howard, on the spot, is there any advantage for Judson to have two-year contracts? At this time, sir, from a fiscal perspective, the answer would be no. Um, at, 
the way that this language is written, um, first, we would not be equipped with the data required in order to um, present contracts based on 25%. 25% of what? Um, we would have to consider uh, the teaching assignment, the students that they are teaching, um, if they are in the same assignment that they were in last year, that they can show growth. Um, so this is a very bad situation. In addition, um, of the area Bear County school districts, um, no district is issuing teachers two-year contracts. Um, there's a, the fiscal perspective in that if we engage in that practice and we become conflicted with an employee under a two-year contract, um, we obviously are going to, to wage um, litigation in those situations, which will then be a cost to the district. So currently, we've done things um, recently, I don't know if the board recalls, that you um, supported the district's recommendation to no longer allow teachers to go three years without an evaluation. Um, so we have made improvements to, um, we still grant waivers to high performing teachers in the district, however they cannot go for as long as they were doing before. And again, this is an effort to make sure that those teachers that were performing great two years ago are going to still be performing great this year. Um, so I, I think that right now I cannot see an advantage for the district for retention purposes even. Um, we don't have people leaving because they're going to go get a longer contract somewhere else. That's not why people are leaving. On the legal aspect, say we have, like right now we have a teacher that we have to terminate, has a one-year contract and we have to pay them to the end of the year. If we terminate a teacher under two-year contract, we have to pay all full two years? No, sir. The, the Texas education is, is such that it would only require one full year's annual salary if we get into that. However, um, that does give them a stronger argument at the, at the uh, state level should they engage us in um, a grievance or, and or litigation over their hearings, over their termination. Thank you. Mr. LaFoy. To me, this is a loaded gun. What I mean by that is, Miss Jones over here gets a two-year contract. Miss Rodriguez over here don't. She asked why I got it. Well, she was in the top 25. Well, you don't appreciate me? I'll go elsewhere. That's what's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of people disappointed because they didn't get two-year. There's the ones that got two-year are going to be happy, and they might not be the ones that deserve two years. Who knows? As she said, we don't have any way to judge this now. I don't think this should be voted in at this time, and I will not vote for it. Ms. Williams. Thank you. I, it sounds so nice on the outside, but when you think that, there's a lot of concerns I have about it. And the evaluation process isn't really so much one of them, because I don't believe that if you have a two-year contract and you have a yearly evaluation, that the evaluation means nothing. Because if you're violating the terms of your contract or you're not performing to the terms of your contract, there's action we can take. But, um, you know, how you measure a teacher, it's not just numbers. It's, I mean, it, numbers are important, and that's what we hear all day long, but it's not just numbers. There's so many aspects and so many things that are so different across the boards. And, you know, we have teachers that we're going to be looking to bump their numbers up in terms of the ratios in some of the schools in, in our campuses, but some are not. We're going to have teachers teaching a lot more kids on some campuses and some having an easier day in a sense. It's so hard to measure that. So it makes me very concerned. And, you know, 25% sounds like a nice number, but then you have 75% that aren't eligible. But I think my biggest concern is more than anything is how you measure the top 25. I really need more clarity on that. Sir, and I would also like to stress that we don't even have performance data, student performance data, at the time we go to contract renewal process. Um, and I don't foresee that the state will be able to ever get us that before the contract process. I was curious Ms. about that too. Thank you. Mr. Macias. This is exactly what this agenda item is, uh, its effect is supposed to bring out. It's supposed to ask those questions. I'm not even sure I would support it yet. But I tell you what, I don't have a plan. There's not been a viable proposal. I'm hearing it can't work. We hadn't even brought a proposal to us to see how it could work. I don't like to hear, um, I'll, I'm pardon if it sounds negative, a closed-minded approach to something. I think we can be innovative. I think we can exhibit leadership. And watch, I've seen a lot of districts see something we're doing, and then they copy us. 
It's leadership. If we're able to show the, the district, our community, that we can do something outside of the box, let's try. Again, I'm going to stay on record. I don't even know if I'd support it because I don't have a plan yet. The concerns about 25 percent, that's just a number. If you guys come back and say we can do the top 15 percent, bring it to us and show 15 percent. Um, in terms of um, judging or evaluating, I think there's some inconsistencies in how we evaluate teachers. This will actually hopefully bring things together so that we're evaluating as objectively as possible. Thirdly, if we develop a plan that keeps our top teachers here, that's part of the retention issue. So I would disagree that this has a potential to help because I think it does. But mind you, all of this is great discussion, but there's nothing that's being given to the board because administration doesn't support this effort to say that this is how it would work if we did it. And in terms of the fiscal responsibility, we can even put in the contract if there's ever cuts from the budget that we would have to go back to a year. Because we've been here when we got cut by Austin. So there's ways to think innovatively about how we would get this accomplished. I just don't like the, the attitude of it's just not going to work. I want to see a plan first. And I'm hoping that my colleagues will continue to engage this discussion to determine what could work. And if it comes back, and we look at everything and we say, okay, and we put our input and it doesn't work, then, then I won't support it myself. But we need to pull the trigger and we need to do something. And so this is why this is on here, so that we can at least direct administration to provide us with something that could work. And the fact that we've done it before in the past means that it is possible when we've had two-year contracts, three-year contracts. Um, so, you know, we'll just have to see. And then also... Uh, Ms. McKinney nodding her head over there gave me another idea. We can even ask our teachers if they want this. That could be part of the plan. Do teachers want multi-year contract? And if they say no with all that data, then we, we kill it. But we don't know anything right now. We're just here talking. But this is part of what I wanted, but I want a little more, and I want a plan. So. First, I'm going to disagree with you, Mr. Macias. I don't believe there's inconsistency as far as evaluations. Every teacher is evaluated under the same evaluation system. There's no two systems. Number two, I believe the state of Texas is doing a field testing for a new evaluation system, which we don't know how, how that one is going to work. As far as the 25%, I agree. What 25%? I used to be an evaluator. I guarantee you. Uh, there's no way that I could say, yeah, I'm going to choose this 25%. I'm going to use this top 25. It, it would be very, very hard. If it would be nice, every school district, I guarantee you, would be using it. And if we do it, we did a study for Bear County. If we do a study, uh, we can call TASME and say, how many districts are using a two-year contract? I don't think there will be too many school districts especially not knowing what the state is going to do every other year as far as the funding. It would be great if we could do it for everybody, not just 25%. What happened to the other 75%? We care about all our teachers, not 25%. I'm sorry, I have to disagree and I will not be supporting this because I don't think, like you say, we need a plan. Well, maybe when they show us a good plan, I might support it, but at this time, I am not ready to support something like this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. It's hard to follow that, but I have one question. Um, just if we were to move forward, if we did vote to support this, who would even come up, who would formulate the plan? Or, and I understand, I mean, and Ms. Howard has a lot that she does, but the evaluation, I mean, it's more in the hiring. I just, I guess I'm, you know, does, I don't think any of us have a magic formula on what makes a good teacher, and no disrespect to Ms. Howard, but I'm not sure she has a magic. So I'm just confused on how we could even formulate a plan if it was given, you know, so if I was to vote to support moving forward to make a plan, I'm not even clear on who's making a plan and their comfort level on that. I, I agree, change is not always bad. It, it absolutely isn't, but I'm just kind of concerned about that. That's all, thanks. Yeah, um, 
If there's a teacher that has a, um, lives in an area of our district, uh, we'll, we'll say Rolling Meadows, um, where you have higher performing students, and then of course if you're at a school like Handlewood where there's some challenges, and you start evaluating the teacher based on the scores, you have a different population that you're dealing with. That's where, that's where I feel there may be some inconsistencies with that evaluation, and so I'll, I have to disagree with you, Mr. Salinas. There are some inconsistencies on how we evaluate a teacher, and so we need to bridge that in some way, shape, or form. If we can extend two years to 100% and it's viable, I would support that too. This 25%, don't get lost on the 25%. It's just a proposal. If the administration comes back and says we can only do 10% to make it work, hey, I'm willing to hear that out. Also, do not mistake this agenda item as we are supporting two-year contracts. We don't have a plan, and the questions you guys are asking are all legitimate. We need a plan. So I'm going to urge you to support us getting a plan so that we can evaluate and then make a determination if this has any legs. Right now, we're just, again, just talking. So this, hopefully, if we can support it, we will get a formal plan from administration. If Ms. Howard or Dr. Mackey comes back and says, I, I don't have time, well, then let's remedy the situation at that point and find somebody to do it. We're hiring consultants every day, it seems like. Get a consultant. But the thing is, we need to do something. So I just would encourage you to support just the idea of getting a plan. This is all this agenda item is. Nothing more right now. Thank you, Mr. Salinas. My opinion is that beneath all of this is um, a more deep-rooted issue, and that is communication um, between the board and administration. Um, I've heard Mr. Macias say several times tonight that um, this agenda item is to uh, bring things to the superintendent's attention. I'm willing to support <laughs> listening to a plan. Um, I certainly can tell you that I'm not in favor of a two-year contract. Um, I was here when we had two-year contracts. Um, then we gave just the administrators two-year contracts and not the teachers. And I thought that was very unfair. Um, but that wasn't any of the board's decision. That was administration's decision. I agree with everything everyone said. I don't have any idea of how you're going to find the top 25%. Um, I think two-year contracts are a danger, not because we can't write the language that says we don't have the funding, um, but because sometimes when people get a long contract, They've got a contract, and so the teachers feel they have a two-year contract. Maybe they won't be as good the second year. But um, I'm going to support a plan just so that we can try to communicate, and maybe out of the plan for that, we can come up with some other things that will be helpful to us um, in the retention of our teachers but may not end up with a two-year contract. Um, there was one other thing. Um, Dr. Dr. Mackey, um, I think the, the one point that Mr. Macias made that is probably the biggest is, you know, when we have our, our sessions, our closed session meetings on administrators, you say, well, I want this one because they have the highest scores at this grade level. Well, I want this one because all of their kids passed star. Or, and so you do take those evaluation criteria into consideration and prom into promotion. And we do have some problems with our higher percentage of low soci socioeconomic students being challenged to compete with their fellow teachers that are in higher, commun higher economic communities. Um, and if we're honest, there's a difference in children that have books and children that don't have books. And, you know, let's not pretend that all is fair. 
there's a difference. Um, it's one of the things I admired about um, Ms. Arnell and Masters over the years. Masters is in a area that's considered our south end, and she had to work extra hard, and I know you didn't tell me that, I already know. And lots of hours in order for her students to reach the same level as the students at Olympia, just because that's just the way it is. And so um, I'd be interested in what could come out of this as far as um, in the evaluation, how are you taking into consideration our teachers or our employees that have more challenging needs in their campuses when um, the time comes to promote. But Gilbert, I don't think the two-year contract is a way to go, but I'm not opposed to information and out-of-the-box thinking. Yeah. I'm going to take a swag here. I don't think teachers really care about two-year contracts. They care about their salary, what we put in their pocket to buy their insurance, and work environment and enjoying what they do. I don't think a two-year contract is going to keep anybody here or drive anybody away. <clears throat> I think it's a mood point. I mean, I really think it's a mood point. And as for, and Ms. Adair, as for, you know, teachers teach in the schools because that's where they want to teach, right? Am I right? Huh? But they leave. No, 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 no. No, Mr. Dale, no, no. Wrong. The t wrong. the principal the, the principal hires the principal those hires teachers, them. and those teachers, and Some those teachers. Very like a like a one percent. One percent. The teachers hired to the. We have eighteen hundred teachers. Less than less than what fifty, not even less than fifty. Yes, been moved. Right. Yes. No, so I I totally disagree with you, Mr. Dare, on that. You're wrong. Um, you know, teachers go to the school because a principal hires every teacher in their school, right? And every teacher, every principal asks the teacher, do you want to teach here at this school? And they say yes. So I, I don't buy that argument. Thank you. Okay, no further discussion. Let's go ahead and vote on the motion. Dr. Mackey. Oh, there Okay, motion fails five to two. E, consider and take action regarding approval to launch a, <laughs> launch a marketing initiative that promotes Texas Education Code 11.1513J that stipulates that no employee shall be restricted in their ability to communicate directly with a member of the Board of Trustees regarding a, mem regarding a matter relating to the operation of the district. Mr. Macias. Second. Motion by Mr. Macias. Second. Second by Mr. Flores. Discussion. Mr. Macias. Thank you, Mr. Salinas. Uh, well, I, I random, randomly pick schools and I'll visit with um, certain um, high schools or middle schools or elementary schools. and. One thing that really surprises me is that there's uh, so much apprehension from our employees to talk to us. And um, I don't know if it's intimidation. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But that apprehension is very real. And it, it's something that, that I've been concerned about. This item is actually a part two. Um, a few years, a couple years ago, I asked that we put this particular statute in the break rooms of our schools so that employees know that it is um, – appropriate to talk to us about the operation of the district. Now, mind you, I don't want to micromanage it. That's not our job. We have capable administrators that do that. But if it's relating to the operation of the district, I'd like input. It helps us in our decisions and understanding of what's happening in the district. But when I get feedback from people that, that are real tentative or they'll say, don't say anything or they're apprehensive, there is a gen genuine fear talking to members of the board, I think that it is incumbent upon our board leadership. It's incumbent on our board leadership to send a very clear message that uh, we will not tolerate uh, any sort of intimidation of our employees in terms of talking directly to the board. I mean, we are an open 
district, and we have an open door policy. And I know what Dr. Mackey does as well, but so do the board members. I mean, you can talk to us without any fear. But if we're not doing what we can to make that point very clear, then we're going to continue to allow this apprehension and tentativeness and um, to, to continue. And it's a behavior that we cannot tolerate. And, Dr. Mackey, if I ever find out that there are administrators or employees that are saying don't talk to the board, I hope that you would take swift action on that because that's against the law. So this code here is uh, to market this. And, and, again, I'm going to put it in your plate. You market it in any which way you think might be effective. But our employees are still under a real fear that they can't talk to the board. So we need to make sure that we really shout this from the mountaintops. There is nothing wrong with talking to the board members about the operation of this district. Okay. Th there's nothing wrong with talking to a board member, but there is something when board member interferes with the I'm not saying anything about interferes okay. or procedures. Yeah. I'm talking feedback about the operation of this district. That's all this agenda item states. Ms. So that's it. Okay. There, since that was directed towards Dr. Mackey, there is a problem when board members are dealing with the operation and the running of a school, when the school is trying to run the business and they call in teachers out of the classroom or going in there, you know, that's what board operating procedures is. This would be good if we had good directions and good, clear communication that we honest, that we go into the school and being honest about it instead of trying to tell teachers, well, you tell me what's going on so I can get on that principal. I can tell Dr. Mackey get on the principal. All you create is a big morale problem for that school. And the, the, if you're going to communicate with the with a teacher and they a uh, teacher or a custodian or maintenance and they say, well, hey, this is a problem or a concern or something, my question is, where is the operating procedures, where is the board policy, DGBA, where it says resolve every concern and problem at the lowest level? I don't get involved in principals or teachers or concerns at the school. I think the administrators need to, and the administrators need to handle that on that campus level. Now, I can agree that no principal is, uh, administrator is going to go up to a board member and say, I'm going to fire you if you talk to a board member. I've never heard of that. Well, I've never heard of I've that. I've heard of employees you know, saying they've been told to not talk uh, to the board members. Well, uh, mm -hmm. I haven't. And I'm just saying, I've been here seven years and I haven't. But if I told hold, hold, hold on. Name, would they get fired tomorrow? <laughs> Point of order. Oh, uh, well, order, well Let's yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Mackey. Mackey. I'm sorry. You but, have, but, you but, have, you have Actually, I have the floor. Uh, Dr. Mackey just interjected. I hadn't finished oh, okay. my conversation, so, so, but, but I was allowing Dr. Mackey to provide some input. And then again, I appreciate that. But the bottom line is that there is a real apprehension. And nowhere in this agenda item does it say that we're going to manage, direct, or tell an employee what to do. All I want to do is hear, and I don't want that apprehension to be so fearful that we're not hearing from our employees. Now, if we cross the line and we do something other, then you have every right to go back and, and we deal with that issue. No, that but, but the problem here is that this is a law. If we have local policy or I – mean, this is the law I'm stating here, this Texas Education Code. So this is not something that's a local policy. There should be no prohibition – for employees talking to the board about the operation of this district. And that's all this says. But clearly there needs to be some parameters, and I can understand what you're saying, let administration or management handle problems. But who's to say that the operation of the district is always problems? There could be some really good ideas of what's happening, but there's still apprehension. So not every dialogue with an employee is going to be about an issue, but I certainly don't like that wall being there. And there is a wall. And, and we don't need that wall if we're going to be a part of this team that leads this district forward. So I'm, I'm at a point where there's some frustration. If you hear that in my voice, it's because I hear that way too often. So if we're going to be a cellular district that's going to go to that next level, we need to have that open communication with our employees. And at this point, I just don't think we do. I, I agree with the open communication and, and, and things of that sort, but it seems to me like sometimes, and, and I do get the calls, that board members are probing, are prob, proing, probing admin, I mean, teachers, well, tell me something about this administrator, tell me something about this teacher, uh, that right there, and the principals do call me or they do get a concern about, hey, it's causing a disruption on that campus. And, you know, as far as, as, far as them... I, that's why, you know, Mr. Salinas talk about this all the time. That's why we need operating procedure. How are you going to function when you go on a board? 
uh, when you go to a building, are you going to start asking questions and talking about another teacher or administrator, or are you there to say, hey, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm supporting you all? I don't know what the perimeters are when you, when you go there. And Mr. Salinas and I talk about this all the time. That's what operating procedures tell us. How are we going to function when you go to a, a, a building? How are we going to function like that? You know, we need that in right. We need to see how we're going to work as a team when, when that happens. Just like the team of eight, when, when you go to a building, you say, well, I'm going to call the superintendent. How many times I never hear until a principal called me and said, what is the board member doing on campus? What are they talking to my teachers about? What's going on? See, they're already uh, panicking on different things like that. But if we have good procedures, it eliminates all these problems. That's why we need some direct, we, you talked about formal process and things like that. That's what they do with a team. And I can share with the administrators that, hey, here's our uh, board operating procedures. They're on the campus. They're visiting, supporting the teachers, supporting administration, supporting all the staff for doing the right things. Now, if a, if a person is telling because it's the law, it is the law. And we, we will not tolerate someone breaking the law, you know, because the law says that any personnel can talk to a board member. Yes. But when are you a board member? I, I just kind of say, when are you a board member? You're a board member when you meet as a, as a team and formalize in the process of what we're doing tonight. You're not a board member showing on campus and saying, I'm a board member, I, I need to talk to you about a problem. It's, it's hey, I'm a, I'm a supportive individual, a concerned citizen. I, I don't know. That's what... I'm, I'm, I'm puzzling about this and because I'm hearing the frustration in my administrators when it's happened, and I'm trying to figure out how I can be an in-between and help support the, these things. You know, I'm just trying to figure it out, and I don't, have the, I don't have the answer to this because some things that I'm enduring now, I haven't dealt in the 15 years as a superintendent. So I'm trying to make, find a way to, to see how we can make this a smooth transition. That's all I want to look at. Mr. Floyd. Thank you. Um, well, back in my first term here, uh, Ms. Bagley was bringing this out, and I had, uh, I had them put this in everybody's pay envelope when, they're, they're, when they were getting it. And then I had them put it on the website that this is there. We started that back then. I, you know, I had recommended that, and the board agreed. It seems like the step to go now, when we get an employee handbook, you have a page, sign it, boom then you can say that everybody has been given that, uh, you know, has the opportunity. And just, it's part of the handbook. I read it, there it is, sign it. You can't make them talk to you, and they're still going to be apprehensive. My, when I go to a school, I always call Dr. Mackey, and I tell him, hey, I'm off today, I might go to Wagner, I'll go to Judson or somewhere, Woodlake. Dr. Battle knows that I go over there and... Uh, pop in on her after work sometimes, say, hey, how's it going? And I always talk to the principal first and tell him, hey, I'm just going to walk around and see the artwork or whatever, you know. And then it's, uh, some teachers come up, some teachers, it's just a hello. They like to see board members there. I mean, but I'm not there as a board member. I'm, you know, it's a, I'm a citizen that happens to be a board member. And uh, the only time we have authority is when we meet at least four of us, and it's published a uh, meeting. So uh, I think as an initiative for this, we have a thing in the handbook that, hey, everybody signs this. We can get that out next week and have it done after the holidays and put it in their folder, whatever. Thank you. Get pay stubs anymore, so it's, it's, it's about less than a hundred. Less than a hundred people get. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah one does. Less than one hundred. Uh, but she knows she can call. Miss, <laughs> oh, Mr. Laporte. Yeah. Look out. You all know, I go to Park Village a lot. Why? My wife works there. She's a full-time volunteer in the library. So I don't call Dr. Mackey every time I go over there. But if I go somewhere else, I will call. The thing is, I have never had anybody not ask me a question when they had a concern. Every, darn near every teacher, principal, vice principal, know who I am. I've been around 10 years. The thing is, folks, 
I don't know where the uh, people are getting this stuff. Oh, they're scared, they're scared. They ain't scared to me. Maybe they're scared of you, Mr. Matthias. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Two facts. I'm on this board three and a half years, and no one has ever brought this up to me. Also being on a board three and a half years, we haven't had one grievance, one complaint, one investigation that anybody was told not to talk to anybody. It's a violation of the law. So I don't know where you're getting this from. I've never had one. We've never had one in the three and a half years on the board that someone come to the board in a legal capacity with a lawyer and said, I was reprimanded or I was told not to do this from an administrator or anyone else. So I don't know where you all getting this, okay? If, there's, if this is out there, it's your duty, your fiduciary duty as a board member to bring to this board. And in three and a half years, no one has ever brought anything to this board. You have a sworn fiduciary duty, if the law is broken, to bring it to the board that someone was told by their supervisor not to come to the board. So I'm calling your bluff. If this is out there, I want names. I want to know who it is. Okay? Okay? Well, if you, if you know this, Ms. Dare, why didn't you bring the superintendent in the board? Okay? Okay, so with one incident, one incident. So this is rebel rousing. I think uh, you make really good points. I think there's a natural intimidation factor, and, and I think that's maybe part of what Jose might be trying to eliminate. And, you know, earlier in the week I, I joked around with Dr. Mackey with a cabinet member. They were both present, and I asked the cabinet member, are you intimidated by Dr. Mackey? And with Dr. Mackey standing there smiling right there, Dr. Mackey heard the response from the cabinet member, and the cabinet member said, of course I'm intimidated by him. He's my boss. So there's going to be a natural intimidation factor with Dr. Mackey and bringing things to him or bringing things to the board. It's going to be there. And I'm not suggesting we go, you know, have Dr. Mackey passing out, I don't know, cookies and balloons or something to <laughs> make us look more friendly. <laughs> Although it does sound like a good idea, though, now when I say it. Um, oh, yes, candy okay. around. Everybody, yes, we've got, got candy. candy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Holy and I, I did notice that you were offering candy earlier, so that that helps. But I guess I think that's what Jose might be looking to is just how we can show that you are open, we are open to concerns and all. I, I think, but I think that that's partly something you're not going to ever get past is the fact that this cabinet member, and I'm sure most of the cabinet members, if they were being honest, might say that Dr. Mackey's intimidating because he's the boss. So I, it's hard to get around that. And to, but I, I really do like the idea of putting that in a, a handbook. I yeah, think that's I'll a great idea. Possible. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, and then uh, we'll entertain the Go ahead, Mr. Macias. Yeah. Now, all this is good discussion, and again, I, I like that we're thinking and we're trying to, to figure out how we're going to move forward with this. But I do want to go back to the, the agenda item again, and uh, it is um, more on the, on the marketing side, gentlemen. And again, that idea that you mentioned, Mr. Florida, is a great marketing idea. I don't want to limit administration to just doing that. I want them to market it and provide a, a marketing initiative. That's why the language is broad in that respect, just to see what else they can come up with. But um, the thing, well, you know, this is important, Gilbert. This is very important. Now, the thing is, I attended, or actually, what should I say? I asked uh, administration to put together a college readiness discussion several months ago. We had all kinds of people there. But the input there I don't think was as robust as it would have been if administrators weren't present. I really felt there was people holding back on their opinions on what needed to be done. That's probably when I got my first signal that there's a wall. Um, Dr. Mackey did allude also to another very important point that I need to clarify. When are we board members? And we're certainly board members when, when, when we convene. We're not board members when we're not in session. But again, we're not taking action when we're in session. We're just simply talking. And that is permissible. So uh, hopefully that brings some clarification to you, Dr. Mackey. We're not directing, nor are we taking action outside of the boardroom. As Mr. Florida said, we're, we're just citizens that happen to be board members. And that, that can't be lost in the fact. If we have um, a passion, it's because we are board members and we want to know what is happening and what your thoughts are. And we don't want that wall there. 
So just know that that's the big difference between when we're out there. But you did also give me one other great idea that I'm thinking about when you mentioned. Maybe we should have formal discussion with our employees, just like we're talking with parental engagement where we have parents meeting with the board. We have employees meet with the board to have some sort of dialogue. Um, I don't know, maybe management not be present because of the intimidation factor. But the bottom line is any mode that improves that communication and if we need to do it, come together as a board to have an employee forum, I mean, I'm, that's innovative. That's something that will improve dialogue and communication with us. I'm not suggesting it on this agenda item. It's not a part of it. But just to make a point that if that's what we need to do to, to get the wheels moving, then, then we might consider it. Again, just to go back to the agenda item, this is just in the marketing initiative to ensure that we communicate that this education code that is the law of the land is communicated to all of our employees, period. Mr. Flores. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to amend the motion. Uh, consider and take action regarding the approval to have each employee sign a page in the handbook to be put in, that can be done for this year too, and then going on out as our way of telling the employees, making sure that they're aware of it. That's what you want to know, make sure that they're aware of it. And this way, we have on there. Because if then if an employee comes up to you and says, hey, I was told I can't talk to you, or I was told, uh, you know, can I talk to you? Then you can say, well, let's look at your person, you know, check and see, make sure they're, they have that in there. And they know they can. Now, as far as marketing initiatives to promote that, I mean, Christ, what do you have to do? How many, how many meetings, community meetings do we have where there was food and then there were four people there and everything, you know? How are you going to get these employees to come talk to you? If they, if they have a problem, they're going to talk to somebody. And we're going to hear about it, you know? And, uh, but... You know, there's a governance clock there where you're talking about, I don't know if you remember that, one of the first sessions, Mr. Macias, as far as uh, what we can do. And I think having a, a, a informal coffee or meetings or something with employees is not the way to go. I think you're setting yourself up. Um, it's, uh, you're stepping on the administration's toes, and you can't do that. We rely, we have to set the policy for them, and we have to let them know what we want done, and they have to do it. Because if we meet with people, they oh, we need to do this. We tell Dr. Mackey, hey, Dr. Mackey, we need to do this. Hey, we did it, messed up, something messed up, we got sued for something. You can't evaluate them. So you have to, huh? Well, I'm, I'm just discuss. yeah, all right. All right, my, my amendment, well, he got me talking on it. <laughs> The amendment was that we uh, get this uh, on a. Okay. With that law on it. Boo. I have read this. Yes. Yes. All of our compliance initiatives for the school year are paperless, so it requires an e-verification. Okay, well. It's actually already being done right now. Um, it's open till the end of December. So now, do all employees have access? All the uh, all maintenance people, all the custodial employees. people, everybody, everybody including our substitutes. Okay. Every employee of the district. Okay. Hey, that's. I mean, that's what I'll say. The amendment is to. Continue to uh, uh, God. How do we communicate or get this? Get this in their files that they know they have to. I made a motion. You want to? There's an amendment. I withdraw it. If you want to do? I withdraw mine. Excuse me, one at a time. I withdraw my motion. Let Mr. Salyer come in. participate in the HR annual compliance verification. Yes, sir. Very good, Steve. Sir. 
second. Oh. Well, I second the voting. <laughs> Jackie, give it to Mr. LaFoyle, please. He's been dying to second something. Okay, okay, we have seconds. Okay, we, can, we have an amendment. Can we vote on the amendment, please? Oh. Is there a discussion? Yes, sir. Right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, sir. We have voted five yes, two no's. The amendment carries. Now we vote on the motion with the amendment. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's vote on the motion. Oh, excuse me. Oh, discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Mr. Mathias, you remember on having meetings for the uh, uh, parents, how many showed up? Okay. Well, we have meetings for the parents. Uh, the schools have meetings for them to come to meetings. We had them for the uh, uh, recently, bond. the bond and all that. How many people showed up? Very few. How many things going to show up from our teachers and everything else? None. Please. As amended, yeah. yeah. Okay. One abstention and six yeses. Okay. Uh, F. Consider. Can you raise that? Consider and take possible action regarding approval to initiate an anonymous employee survey of current and exited employees from this academic year that will address employee morale, retention, compensation, and residency. Ms. Williams. Motion by Ms. Williams. Second. second. I second by Ms. Salina. Uh, try to state this and stay on the agenda. Can we not take all night to discuss this? Why not? You know, it says an anonymous survey, etc., and that's all it says, and it is 9.30, and I have to leave at 5 o'clock in the morning. We haven't done any of our other stuff. No, I, I'm committed, but that's why I pressed my button first. Can we just get on with it already? Go ahead, ma'am. You got the... Okay, Williams. Thank you. I know we've talked about this before, and there was mixed um, there was mixed reviews on whether or not employees would actually be honest in surveys, and that was a lot of the question what held me up before. But I do think that, you know, in talking to more folks and hearing more concerns about it, that's why I brought this back, is I do think that it's important. Given the number of exits this past year, I think that this is, you know, a smaller step in communicating to our staff. It's anonymous. That's the most important part in all of the scripting to me is that it's anonymous so that people don't feel like there could be any repercussions and then that way our administration is completely protected in saying we have no way of tracing that. So that's, that's my two cents in it is it needs to be anonymous and it's a way to reach out to all of our staff. And, and there is concern too, uh, you know, electronically, everybody knows, everybody watches enough TV, everything's traceable. So we need to reach out to the people that can actually help prevent, you know, that, that fear and, and reassure our staff that anonymous really, really does mean anonymous. Thank you. Mr. Set. Yes. Motion to amend. Motion. Yes, sir. Okay. My motion is, and if this passes tonight. Amendment. I'm, I'm getting ready to say it. That's what oh, I'm doing. I'm saying if this passes tonight, my motion to amend is include a rating of the board members on this, one to five, five being excellent, no being no. Because if we want transparency and we want to know what employees think of us, I want, if this passes, I want a rating of each individual board member by name, not as a whole. Can I have a second? Second. Second. My motion to amend, if this passes, 
that a rating of individual board members on a rating scale be, on, be included in this survey? Okay, I can support what you're saying, but you can't do it that way. You can't amend a, wait, let me say something. If this passes, then do that. No, no. Okay. Motion to amend that board rating of individual board members by name be included in this survey. Okay, we got a we got a amendment, we got a second discussion. Chris was here. Thank you. Um, I thought that that was already affirmed by if we were reelected or elected to the office on how we are no, appearing no. in a community. No. We're not. Yeah. We're not responsible. Of? I mean, I'm, I'm not afraid, but I just want to put that out there. Our affirmation is that we're serving in this capacity already, and that we've won an election and a reelection. So the thing is, that's dangerous because uh, it will send a very false message. Because I don't deal with every constituency group at Judson. I have my district four that I deal heavily with. And, you know, but, hey, I'm good with it. Uh, but remember, the last time we did a survey, 60% of our employees lived in the district. And so that's why, that's why residency is on this item, too, I suspect, so we can find out where they're living. We already know that. I understand. I understand. I understand that. But I just want to make that point. We're here because we have enough votes to be here. So... But then again, if we can do that, I, I ask that you know we include administrators. Then, I mean, if you want to really be get to the bottom of things, you include administrators in the same assessment. And if I need to amend this motion too after this, I'll do so because I think we shouldn't just point out the board. Because you know what, the misconception. Let me tell you, I got the floor. The misperception is that the board is responsible for a lot of things that we don't even know that's going on. So. If that's the truth, then administration is kind of off the hook. We need to put administration just as accountable as we are. So um, I'll wait and see if your amendment passes. It's not a bad one. And then I'll go ahead and, and um, consider amending. Actually, hold on. Just for board operating procedures, should I um, – I'm thinking about amending it now. Uh, what do we do? If we have already amendment on the floor, do, I, uh, do we yes, wait to close? Yeah. We got a vote. Oh, can I can no, you don't. I, I can – okay. So if I'm allowed to do that, then I'll go ahead and amend that we also include ratings of our cabinet, our administrators. Uh, there's no second yet. Is that administrators, principals, superintendents? What are you referring to? I would, I would dare say administrators. Uh, my vision was the cabinet, but um, it could extend to principals. No, just say what it is you Well, want. administrators, just administrators, which is the cabinet. That we cabinet. cabinet. Well – Cabinet. Just cabinet. Rating, just like we'll be rated. By name. That's fair. Second. Mr. Flores. Oh, do we have a second on that one? I second. Oh, okay. Discussions. Mr. Flores. Okay. The only problem I have with that is that the administrators are employees also. The cabinet are employees. I think that the morale does start here at the board. And I think that by having them, you know, the employees, you know, they look back and say, oh, wow, look, this is going on here. This, you know, board members are doing this, going to the camp, saying things, whatever. But they can rate us. And we're not just our constituents in our single-member district. We're responsible for the whole district. And I think, you know, some may not know us. They may not rate us high. Some may know us and they will rate us high. Or they may know us and rate us low, whatever. But uh, it's just a way for us to get a feel as to what our employees are thinking. And that's our administrators, what they're thinking, too, about us. Because we put a lot of pressure on them, you know. So uh, that's what I have to say on your amendment there. Mr. Sellers. We rate, we rate one employee the superintendent. 
The employees don't rate the superintendent, we rate the superintendent. The intent is, if we're going to say out how the culture of this district is and how employees feel about the board, they should have the opportunity as employees. There's a difference between those who vote for us and those who work for us. And that's my intent. I want to know how employees feel about this board. It doesn't matter, you know, how they feel about Dr. Mackey because we hire Dr. Mackey and he hires his cabinet. So that's all I got to say. I was next. I didn't change that. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to amend our amendment or our amendment, any of that, but I would throw out there that if we're going to put a number value on the performance of the board and our cabinet, why not put it on other people? To me, what does it mean? We can put that number value. We can, yes, but I'm, what my question is, is I'll, I just don't understand the, revel, the how it's relevant. If we get a board, you know, one member is rated a five and one, no offense, is rated a one, what's that mean? That doesn't mean anything. What if, if Dr. Mackey's rated a five and, you know, Mr. Elizondo, for whatever reasons, is rated a one? What's that mean? Does that mean tomorrow we're going to say, sorry, Mr. Elizondo, it's not working out? What's it mean? You know, and that's obviously not going to happen. That's why I like to pick on Mr. Elizondo. But, but what does that number mean? So why are we even asking that question? I, I guess, that, well, that's what I'm asking, you know, for those that have amended to add that, it's not that I don't want to support, but what does it mean going forward? What it means going forward is, Mr. Mancia has brought, well, you brought up the issue that mm -hmm. people can't say what they think out there. Mm -hmm. These people are our employees. Right. I want to know what the employees think of the board, because right. cultural change starts at the top. Right. If they're unhappy with the board, I want to hear about right. it. If they're right. unhappy with individual board members, I want to hear about it. Right, and, and that's I agree. You want a survey, you want an right. all inclusive survey, right. you look at the top and mm -hmm. from the bottom up, okay? And that's why if we do a survey, I want board members rated on there by name individually mm -hmm. because we can't, because you know mm -hmm. what? I don't think people really want to, on this board want to, ha want to have that. I really don't. Mm -hmm. I think they're afraid of what the employees will say about it. Well, I'm actually, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm not objecting to it. I'm just, and I, so I'll just, I will relinquish my speaking, but my question is, what are we going to do with it after? But I will support it. Ms. I don't, I mean. Miss, so Mr. Seller, you already spoke. Okay. Uh, Mr. Miss Ader. I really don't care. <laughs> oh, okay, next. I'm next. You know, Ms. Williams put this agenda item on here, and when I read it, um, number one, it's anonymous. That means we are not going to do it in Judson. And, you know, because it's not being done in Judson, by Judson, I want Mr. Sayer to know for sure that you want an outside firm to get data on what employees think or don't think. I mean, tonight we've made a pretty good example of how we're working together as a team without a survey. But, um, you know, I had forgot this was an anonymous survey done by an outside agency. Um, if you'd like to bring um, a survey back of the board members, there's a TASB review of board members uh, on the TASB website. I'd be happy to participate in that. But I don't think I want an outside agency evaluating the board because... You can't do anything about it anyway. Thank, thank you, Ms. Adair. Now I'm going to make an amendment. I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like to make an amendment that we consider this with an RFQ. An RFQ and I amend that uh, we keep out the administrators. That we want an RFQ, and, and I, I think it's the law. We have no business or finding out evaluating administrators. That cannot be on that survey. Okay. Uh, 
Right, any educator. So as far as the board, yes. I'll be the first one to say yes. I want I want an evaluation. I don't have a problem. But so RFQ and well, we have to remove the one for administrators. Okay, on the First Amendment? Oh, okay. Okay. Wait. Hold on, Arnold. Uh, Mr. Mr. Dr. Mackey just informed us that the issue is against the law that we can't serve. Do, do you have the law, though? Is it, I mean, I want, the, I, I yes. want to hear the law. Yes, sir. I want, Texas I want to see Education what this is. Code, Chapter 21, Section 355, Confidentiality. A document evaluating the performance of a teacher or administrator is confidential. You cannot single them out by name in a public But it's survey. not an evaluation that we're doing. We're not evaluating their performance. We're evaluating their opinion. That is not performance. And sir, I, say that's a difference. sir I, I do feel a responsibility and liability to the district, district here that if we are potentially putting ourselves into significant grievance situation with regard to publicly printing Ed any educator's name in this document for the purpose of performance evaluation. I'll disagree with you, but what I'll do is I will avoid that so we can have legal give us a, a, so a bracket out and I'll withdraw my motion since there is some legitimate uh, issue in terms of what we might need to do with that. So I'll withdraw. <laughs> okay, we're still on my amendment. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yes. Okay, then I withdraw my amendment. Okay, I, on this motion and the amendments that we have, I'd like to make an amendment that we must go out on for an RFQ. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Flores. Let's go ahead and vote. <laughs> We're just... Right. Oh, I'm sorry, RFP. Okay, RFP, I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. On, no, no, no. Just on, my on this motion. No, no. no. He didn't pull this. Okay, wait. Okay, let's go ahead and vote on the RFP. Oh. oh, okay, yes, six to one. Oh, okay, now we're back to the amendment of Mr. Sellier to include the board members. Is that correct? Okay, let's go ahead and vote. Okay. Okay, Mr. Sellier, you have now. Yeah, okay, very good. Now we're back with the motion and the amendments. Okay, raise that. It's amended. Uh, Mr. Sellier, no, six, six to one. Motion carries. Okay, G, consider and take possible action regarding approval of personnel report and updates including new hire, resignation, administrative appointment. We will be going, we will be going to, we're going to be going to executive session. Uh, pursuant to Texas Code section 551.074 discussing personnel. No action or vote will be taken while our executive session. Established uh, quorum now. Uh, we are back from executive session. There was no vote taken while on executive session. 
Uh, this was item uh, <coughs> G. Uh, consider and take possible action regarding items discussed in closed session. Motion by Mr. Sellier, second by Ms. Adair. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, likewise. This time I'd like to introduce the. What's that? Okay. Oh, motion carries. Motion carries? Okay. I'd like to introduce the new uh, uh, assistant principal at Salinas Elementary, Ms. George. Please stand, the new assistant principal. Yeah. And the new assistant principal at Kirby, Miss Bell. Oh, That's right. That's right. We train them well, Ms. We train them well. Oh, come on. Don't scare them off that. Okay, yeah, we're going to start. Consent, start with consent, okay. yeah. Start with consent, yeah. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go into consent item four. Consideration of consent items. And let me know if you want to pull any of the items. <laughs> Speak loud and clearly when you want to pull an item. A, consider and take action regarding approval of monthly financial information as of October 31st, 2013. Consider and take action regarding approval expenditure equal or greater than 50000 Consider and take action approval of budget transfers across functions. Consider and take action regarding quarterly cash investment report for all funds as of September the 30th, 2013. Consider and take action regarding approval of amendments to the budget for 2014 fiscal year. F, consider and take action regarding approval request for proposal 1314 for general instruction supplies. G, consider and take action regarding approval request for bids 14-08 Kirby Middle School Chiller Replacement and related budget amendments to the general operating funds. H, consider and take action regarding approval of an in interlocal agreement with Harris County Department of Education. I, consider and take action approval of elementary class size waiver report for classes 2013-2014 as revised by the district site base committee on October 21st, 2013. J, consider and take action regarding approval of updates to the professional development appraisal system, appraisers list. K, consider and take possible Consider and take action regarding approval of securing legal services related to the Endangered Species Act for the Evans Road property. L. Consider and take. Oh yes, we did L. M. Consider and take. <laughs> consider and take action regarding approval of a ballot cast for Bear Appraisal District Board of Directors casting. 199 votes by resolution for Mr. Jose Macias, M. Who? Dr. Mackey. Dr. Mackey. Okay. On the uh, class size waiver, that one that was in here was the 21st, but I put one as of yesterday on your yes, desk. We saw yeah, that. Yeah. That mm -hmm. would be the one that you're adopting. Yes, yes, right. yes. Okay. Yeah, you gave us a, a new one. Okay, so we're going to. We're going to vote on uh, items A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and K. Motion, Motion by Mr. Sellier. Second. Second by Mr. LaFoyle. All, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed likewise. Motion, Motion carries. M, consider and take action regarding approval of the ballot cast for Bear County Appraisal District Board of Directors, casting 199 votes by resolution for Mr. Jose Macias. Uh, Mr. Flores, you pulled it. Motion. Motion by Ms. Adair. 
Second. Second by Mr. Flores. Discussion. Thank you. Um, Mr. Macias, I want to ask you, uh, you had made a statement in a previous meeting when we gave you the, you know, when you had to get signed up, support of the board, and you had said that if you didn't have the support of the coalition, that you would, uh, you would back out. And do you know what you have on? Well, I'm glad you asked. And, of course, uh, talking with Bear County and specifically actually with Bobby uh, Blunt, um, and Sylvester Vasquez, for that matter, mm -hmm. both individuals. There's no clear the, the um, clear endorsement. Now, I know that Bobby is supporting Miss Byron mm -hmm. with their north side votes, but apparently Alamo College is, has kind of provided a new wrinkle on things. So um, I can tell you that San Antonio ISD is supporting Dr. Trevino. Right. And so I've done some legwork. I don't know. Honestly, I don't, the city of Converse endorsed me just last week. Mm -hmm. um, Kirby's expressed the same interest. Um, it, it really still sort of unknown. And if, if I asked Bobby bluntly, hey, who would you recommend? And it, I, I have no recommendation. So it looks like they, the, the votes are, may already be set because well, I've, I've made that inquiry. I, uh well, I did talk to Sylvester and okay. asked him who the coalition is supporting. And I have a text message if, I'll, if we can share it somehow and everything. Maybe you didn't feel and comfortable telling me. this is what he me. told me. You know, he said, there's not eno enough to go around for the two of them, that Miss Byram and you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not enough votes. Because Northeast got cut down on some votes, mm -hmm. and there's some other votes that people didn't have as much. Northside is giving all of their votes to their person, you know. Um, and so, and he says, uh, I've always told him, being you, because yeah. I asked him, do you have the support of the coalition? And uh, he said that, uh, that Ms. Byram has first support for re-election, an incumbent doing the work for all districts in mine. So, you know, and, and I called him again today, because this was like last week I had a meeting with him. And I called him again today, and I said, what's, what's the deal? I mean, it's going to take at least, they're talking about 700 votes, you know. And I would hate for her to lose out on any, you know, if, um, and if you didn't have 700. You know, I mean, it's the same thing we had before. Yeah, I know? I know. And that's something that was important, too. We want to make sure that we have a voice that's at least uh, advocating for exactly. ISDs. But I just didn't get a clear indication asking Sylvester myself directly that, that she was a shoe-in. And with ACCD being on the fence, and I'll just be honest, I asked ACCD what their direction was and got no reply. So I don't know where they're allocating their 300 votes. I mean, yeah, I know, and I actually sent Denver an email. Yeah. The thing is, there's still a possibility. And so at that point, if there's a possibility, I'd like to at least explore that. Ms. Byram has her support. I know that I have mine. Uh, the city of San Antonio, maybe, but I, I don't know. So... Uh, I wish I knew firmly because I did ask. When does questions. this have to be in? By the fifteenth. Okay, if we had more time, if we had another meeting, I'd, I'd ha be happy to kind of wait it out a little bit yeah. to get that confirmation. But I had to put this on the agenda because we're not convening again until after the fifteenth of December, and um, it's just one of those things that if you don't go forward with it, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. The, the only meeting that we might have is the team building. Yeah, and that. I mean, it's honestly, and I, and I said it on record, if, if I wasn't mm -hmm. viable, I would bow out and we'd support someone. But I didn't get any clear indication that I wasn't viable. It, it, it's just a, a free-for-all for that fifth position. That's what it looks like. And so if I'm, if I'm given the opportunity to serve, that would be great. Uh, I mean, I'd advocate for the same ISDs that Sherry's doing. Mm -hmm. But I just don't know where the other districts are putting their votes. Congress gave me their votes. Did you say San Antonio? Yeah, San, San Antonio. City of San Antonio. City of San Antonio has uh, the, 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 that person. Yeah, they, Dr. Trevino. Yeah. But, but they're talking about possibly doing a resolution to split those votes, and they meet more frequently to do that. Because um, they, they're projecting 700 votes is all they need to put someone in that spot, and they have 914. Yeah. So, uh, again, there's still some negotiation. Jed, specifically with the city of San Antonio, is who I've reached out to to get some clarification on that. Who's that? Jed. His name is Jed, J-E-D. -E 
But, you know, that's, that's just the reality. So at this point, if I'm happy to pull this since I put this on the agenda. If we had another meeting, perhaps on our team building, to, you know, give an opportunity for me to be appointed uh, at that point. We will have to have another team building. Well, you, my, you, you say, you, you know, you, you mentioned that you had possibly Converse. You got, well, you have Converse, you said. That's 11 votes. Yeah, and Kirby's uh, given me a verbal commitment to that support as well. That's three votes. So 199 puts me over 210, I believe. Yeah, but and, that's and, a far and, away from but, and, uh, and I don't know how much Northside has given Sherry. I mean, they, they may have given her 700, and if so, then she's a shoe-in already. Now, the, uh, Northside was, was not going with Sherry. They, were, they had somebody that see, they see, put in. Which means, depending on how many votes they split from their count, and then with ACCDB in the mix, I really think there's still a possibility. I just don't know for sure. Northside is putting up Jim Martin, and they've, and uh, they've uh, always, huh? He used to work here, right? I, I don't know. Huh? See, I can see San Antonio splitting with, with Sergio, yeah. you know. But we have. Oh yeah, we, we can don't do it in the evening. It looks like it might be better one evening. Yeah. Uh, as long as we decide on, on the date. Well, well, I'm sorry, we're out of order. We're not deciding dates for that yeah. right now. Okay. We we'll, we'll have a motion. But you, you, you were saying that we would have a meeting prior to December the 15th, where we can come back and get work to have more information. Mm -hmm. and right. Yeah. Right. Well, next week is gone. Mm -hmm. And we come back from Thanksgiving, and that's the first week in December. Move. Okay. okay, we have a motion to table and a second. Oh, Mr. Okay. Fall, a second. All those in favor of table and the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, likewise. Okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah. now we're in discussion, discussion. items. Mm -hmm. Five. And reports. Update on Bear County. Oh, we did that. Update on local policy, CH local purchasing and acquisition. First reading. That's only a first reading. Yeah. Okay. C. Update to policy, CV local facilities construction. That's another first reading. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would just like to thank the administration. Both of those policies are very clear to see what the changes are, and it has been posted on the web, and whoever wrote those, they're very clear. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mas uh, Elizondo. <laughs> and Mr. Ashmore. <laughs> okay, reimbursement, reimbursement resolution concerning sidewalks. Ms. Ager. We have uh, contacted legal, and it's under advisement of legal that we not uh, use the reimbursement for sidewalks out of a future bond. Okay. Okay. E, success for all update. Ms. Ader. Ms. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you send us the summary data. Yeah, we pulled up with both of the principals, the two schools that are doing it provided that. If you have any questions, they did leave. I went and had them go ahead and leave so I can gather those questions. Ms. Adair said she'd like it posted, which we can do. 
I kind of brought this up. I mean, everybody happy with it? You've seen the data? The data's pretty good. Yeah, yeah Mr. Sawyer, the reason I, I asked for this to go on the agenda is because I saw this big, massive presentation at Q. And I came back and said, That's us. We have that program. Where, where's our data? Mm -hmm. And so um, the administration is arranging too, right? for the board to get a, um, <clears throat> what are y'all calling it? Y'all having some kind of a oh, site visit. Yeah. A site visit for the board right. so we can see it. So and our school's got oh, yes. checks already, too. Yeah. Our school's got checks already, too. 5000 for each school, right? Yep. That was part of the so, deal. Thank you very much, Mr. Zayn. More money. I'm sorry to say more, you more, 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 more money. More money. More money. More money. Communication to Judson. Communication to Judson Community. Can we say there? I think we skipped out. Oh, yeah, not what he's talking about. Um, and uh, Mr. Lemsom, just so you don't think I'm picking on you, the realtors are the people that keep asking why doesn't Judson have anything because they're trying to sell those houses in our school district and they'd like a little publication they can give. Um, we'll have two of them, actually. <laughs> we'll have one larger one and one smaller one that board members and, and such can use when they go on conferences and such. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. District side pays decision making committee. Ms. Hager. Dr. Mack. We have the four dates uh, October 21st, November the 4th, and December the 9th at the district uh, office old boardroom, and March 24th at 445 at the district office old boardroom. And uh, we're we know we have to remove Ms. Tamara Bell because she's been an administrator, and it has to be a teacher, and we're going to find out and start calling the community member and the business member to make sure that they, they're involved in the uh, site-based <coughs> site team. Thank you, Bob. Bob, 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 boundaries for schools. Ms. Okay. Ms. Um, on the boundaries for school, just letting everyone know that uh, we have proceeded with the boundaries. We've already visited two schools and doing public forums. We're doing the boundaries for the entire district, and uh, we're looking at, uh, at Hartman, at Masters, at Salinas, Converse, uh, Coronado. Coronado, Coronado Village, Crestview, uh, Spring Meadows, that it would be affecting, and we're, we'll have a couple more community forums, and we'll be making a recommendation, recommendation at the first of the year to the board. Dr. Mackin. Yes. Is there a way, maybe not real quick, but if we can get boundaries, get the district as if it were built out, you know, with the land out there saying that, okay, over there, like uh, by where, uh, between Metzger and Masters, there's a lot of land going in there, a lot of houses going up in there. Okay, but the, the only thing about that, Mr. Uh, Flores, we're purchasing land on Ben Zingerman right now. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of negotiating. We can't talk too much about that. Well, but, 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 but what I'm saying is if we can sort of see because it is, we got that. No, no, we, we have to have it laid out so that when we do make the changes, like, okay, when when these houses are here, we're gonna, you're going to go to the school, yeah. to Flores Elementary. Yeah, we can do the demographics. So, I know you couldn't, get, you couldn't make it at the <laughs> Elementary, no. But... You go over there, and Tassie that board way people director. know. Mm -hmm. Tasby Board of Directors, we're naming a school after him already. Already? <laughs> that is. We, we, we'll work on it, Ms. Flores. And, and, and I don't expect it right away, you know, but I think that would be a, a way to alleviate something 10 years from now. you got to be dead 10 years before we name a school after you. <laughs> I have to oh, 
only thing I did want to say on that is I wanted to thank Mr. Kirshner and Mr. Raspberry's gone, um, and I think Mr. Ashmore did the other one. And so we want to thank you all for going out and spending your evenings with those community forums. And I have to say, Mr. Kirshner, I don't know, he took a nice pill. He was so nice to those people, even when they asked him. <laughs> Even when they asked the stupid questions. But he did good. He did good. I mean, if I tell you in the bed, he did an outstanding job in listening to the community, and I thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dare. Scotch. All right. Uh, Jay, discussion, the Hesperus route, bus route evaluation system is Williams. Okay. And I think she wanted to see how that's. Okay. The we, yeah. we, we, the procedures in the book, and we have a commit. We have a committee, and we have the transportation coordinator, transportation supervisor, route specialist, and a Judson ISD po police department uh, part of it. And I know there's one thing that I would like to add on that, on that, on the committee is put a parent on the committee. Uh, any parents? That Sunny. We always uh, yeah. <laughs> Hey. We we put Sonny on the transportation committee. Thank you for accepting. <laughs> Thank you for accepting, Sonny. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. Not for the hazard hazardous route. route. Yeah, the hazardous route. route. Hazardous route committee. Is that okay, Sonny? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Give. Oh no. Okay. Bilingual dual language program. Miss Hey there. Miss Miss uh, Robinson, if you could talk about that. Yes, I've been meeting with groups of parents from the bilingual and dual language, I mean from that whole, both, all of them. And one of the things we're going to start with at this point is we have a task force. And we're going to put parents on it. They're already signing up, those that want to participate, teachers, principals. Region 20 is going to serve on the task force. And we're going to write a five-year plan. Uh, we're going to assess where we are. We had one seven years ago, and we finished it. I mean, we accomplished a lot of things, but it, yes, and so when Dr. Mackey rearranged, that's the first thing we're going to do at this point. We're going to regroup and make a five-year plan. Thank you. Gifted and talented, Ms. Adair. Dr. Mackey. Ms. Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <they're funny. laughs> Ms. funny. Ms. Adair asked for the report that's in here, which we provided. We've also, though, tonight provided the handbook. Region 20 is asked to use our handbook with other school districts because it's so well done. So we're real kind of proud of that. A lot of stakeholders had input into the handbook. Um, anything else you want to know? She did want the report posted, which we will do. I want, I want to brag about y'all. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. M. Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics, STEM Academy at Judson Middle School. Let me say there. <laughs> to the, the board, uh, the two STEM people are out, so can we post this another day when they're back? Yes, sir. Okay, thank I, you. I will allow that to be placed on the December Je agenda. December or January. January? Oh, January, I'm sorry, yes, because yes. December is going to be very, very tight. This is my item, and oh, I'm being nice. Me. Well, um, you called me Mr. LaFoyle. I know. Yeah, you gave it to him. He gave he it to gave Dr. It. Mackey. <laughs> he pulled it. <laughs> but we didn't do it last month, and we didn't do it this month. I'm not, I don't want to wait till January, because I think it's really important that we find out where we are. I went ahead and voted tonight for that budget amendment for one-year funding for the STEM program, and we haven't even talked about it. So I, I compromised. I voted to give you all the money, and we haven't talked about the program. So I, December. And I don't want to be last on the agenda. STEM needs to be up at the top. This is very important. I'll think about it. I'll okay. It. Next time I ain't going to vote for the money if y'all don't give it to me. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> for once, I got to agree with Mr. Dare. Are you listening, Mr. Dare? For once, I got to agree with you. I mean, I think that's the one... You know, we're coming in on a timeline on the STEM program, and we really need some info. Yeah. That's, that's so I have to agree with December's you fine. We'll take one time a year. Yeah, we'll take And this is it. We'll make, sure, we'll make sure that's going to be one of them. Thank you very much. Yeah. Jack, thank you. Uh, and transportation overtime, and I'm the one that asked for this. And uh, I believe Dr. Mackey provided. Yes, we get everybody. 
And do uh, you have anybody from transportation? No? Sorry? Me? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I noted that this is overtime for, from September 6th to September 20th, October the 4th, and October the 18th, and most of them are field trips. I noted there's a lot of blank lines for a lot of the employees. Uh, Dr. Mackey, does that, this mean that they're not being offered uh, the uh, routes, the field trips, or they don't want to do it? Or what, what's, what's the deal on this? The, the process they have for in transportation when they do field trips is they used to do it a little bit differently. They used to kind of do a bid thing, but they got away from that because the very thing you're asking, people had a bunch of points to bid and some people didn't. So they started doing an alphabetical system. So she goes down the list. When another field trip comes up, she posts it on the board. You're next in line. Do you want it? And they can accept it or decline it. If they decline it, it goes to the next person. If they want it, it goes to the next person if they want it. So that's the way she posts up on the board. Um, and they do decline some trips. They might pick one up in the next round when they come around. But they all are listed <laughs> alphabetically, and they get to choose. So if my name is there and I don't want to do it, well, you say no. I'll have to wait until they come Until it comes back around again. again. Yes. There's a lot of field trips, though. <laughs> There, there's a lot of field, as you can uh, see by the report, there's yeah, a lot of field the trips. Thing is, are we avoiding to make sure that we're not paying overtime because they only work 25 hours? Mm -hmm. Am the, I the, correct? That, so that's correct. At least they should have 15 hours that they can do field trips. And if they are going to go overtime, I really think they should go to the next person that has not worked. I, I want to back up just a minute. Many of our employees do only have that 25 hour minimum. But many of them also are already at the eight hour minimum. Some are at seven and a half, some are at five and a half, some are at six and a half, just because of the nature of their regular routes. Um, even the midday routes, which are uh, the pre K routes, Correct. some people have those as a standard route, so that might bump them up to eight hours. So, in order to answer the question you're asking me, I, have to do, I do have to go back and ask them if we make allowance for the people that do not get more than the 25 hours, if they're getting first right of refusal on the field trips over the people that. Yeah. I, I can I can I can ask him that. I just know the answer yes. to that piece okay. of it. And, and when you do, just tell Dr. Mackey and, and he'll call me so we can discuss it. Is Excellent. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I appreciate the report. Discuss current GPA scale, Mr. Macias. Doctor. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Mr. Macias. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. Um, I had a, a question about, I guess, our GPA scale. This is actually from a parent that had inquired about the right. GPAs. Um, but is there any feedback on that, Dr. Mackey? Just kind of put it out there. Yeah, we just have like this parent grading scale with A, B, C, D, and the revised grading scale with the A, B, C, which is 70 to 79 instead of 79 to 75. And it's because of the clearinghouse and, and mainly because of kids getting uh, uh, scholarships and qualifying for scholarships we go with A, B, C. A, B, C instead of A, B, C, D, because they get less points between that 74, 74 and 70, they get one point, which if you go from 79 to 70, you would get two points. And that would qualify. A lot of our athletes are missing out on major scholarships. I see. And so that's what, and it's not a board action. I can just take care of it. Okay, and I wasn't sure how, to ha how that was handled, but that definitely helps our students yes. and positions yes. them yes. For, for scholarship yes. opportunities. Yes. And I think we discussed it when we came yeah. to review the agenda with Ms. Adair and Ms. Williams. Are we going to be able to do it at the beginning of the semester, or how is that going to work? No, Remember really, once that we might have to wait? Yeah, yeah. we really need to start at the end of the school year. Yeah. But, but how about our kids this yeah. year? Stay there. Why can't we do it this year? Because the way we'd have to go back and recalculate to be fair to the kids who took it under a different system in the fall. And so you know there's 15 school districts in San Antonio. Only two do it this way. Shirts and Northeast. All the rest do it how we're currently doing it. Well, why don't the school districts want to hurt the students' opportunity for 
Well, there we brought it. To, I brought it to the Bear County officers meeting, financial, and we we had quite a lively debate around it. For one, when you were, you're lowering the standards, number one. So some of the school districts, let's take Northside, they didn't want to lower that because they said if their athletic scholars are making D's, then they're probably going to have a very rough time anyway. So they'd rather help them academically than change it. We've already agreed to change it. Dr. Mankey and I talked about this for the beginning of next year. But you graded people in the fall under a whole different system, which would not be fair. We, we would put ourselves in a, a lot of, um, we would, we absolutely would with other parents. Okay. P, update on board advisory committees. Anybody uh, on the committees went? Bill Gilbert? No. Yeah, I met with the, uh, while well, I was at the uh, curriculum and long range planning com uh, uh, committee meeting, and uh, Ms. Robinson gave a great presentation on curriculum and what they're doing. And I asked that they put that on the website, and I'm sure that's being worked on. Um, yeah, but it, it, it was really good, and it just gives people an insight as to what's going on. And, um, you know, at, uh, we have another meeting set up for uh, December 4th, and that one will be probably more in line with long-range planning. You know, they want to kind of alternate according to Sonny, you know, uh, because – the report we got from Ms. Robinson was excellent, and she she had a PowerPoint. Yeah. yeah, I asked her to post it on the website so everybody can see it. Except for Ms. Adair, don't give her anything. No, thank you. Date on board training, conferences, events, and consider future item agenda items re request by board members. Friday, January 24th, we have our Denim Diamonds. This year it's going to be at the Church Civic Center, 1400 Church Parkway, Building 5. I didn't know they had more than one year. Church, Texas. So start planning.
opportunity to, I got an invitation to go to Killeen ISD. Unfortunately, Dr. Mackey uh, had another conference and he couldn't make it. They had their career center, actually like a dedication for uh, Representative uh, Acock, and they presented him with a real nice plaque. And I happened to go because Mr. Acevedo from Kitty Hawk uh, is going to be the president, he's the president-elect for the Texas Vocational Industrial Authority, right? And uh, I looked at the building, they gave, I asked for a tour, and uh, it's just beautiful. And hopefully in the next couple of years, we can start looking at the possibility of doing a career center for our students. And I'm talking about the two high schools, three high schools, four high schools, maybe. Uh, and I think for the future, we need to start looking at building something for our students because that would help both high schools or three high schools where those students, they, they have, uh, they can go in there and study for their EMT and they get certified by the time they graduate. They have a mini hospital where they have mannequins and they're practicing taking blood pressure and giving injections and it's just amazing. Of course, some of the things we have, they have mechanics, welding, carpentry, it, it's just amazing. So I said, uh, did you all have to do a bond for this? I was talking to the superintendent. He said, we don't run bonds here. He said, excuse me? How do you do it? Where do you get money? Uh, because of Fort Hood being right there, basically they get all the impact money from the government. And basically, they don't have to run any bonds. Uh, it's just amazing. So, of course, they have 42,000 students, and their building was 27,000. It's huge. But we only have 23 and growing. Maybe we can look at a smaller building. There it was 27 maybe in the future bond in the couple of years. Maybe we can look in a, maybe looking for a site and what we're gonna, I mean, the type of building, uh, maybe for 15 million it might cost, I don't know. Cosmetology is just, I mean, they just have everything. I was very, very impressed. And immediately I came and did Dr. Dr. Mackey. And by the way, I did not charge for any mileage. I did it on, on my own. Uh, the, also, what we need to do, there's a, Alamo Colleges is having another, uh, yeah, that you all attended. Anybody wants to go, it's January the 30th, and we need to know, make sure and tell Jackie if you think you can make it. It's on a Thursday, okay? Uh, Dr. Mackey is out of town, so I don't think he'll be able to make it unless he comes in. So it's Thursday the 6th, right? The 4th, December 4th. The coalition No. Alamo College. Oh, is that? Okay. No. no, 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 that's a different one. Right. Yeah, Alamo College. Right. So that, that'll be January 30th. Think, keep that, put it in your calendar. It's going to be in, uh, oh, they haven't decided a site yet. They haven't decided a site. Okay. Tim, we need, right now, we need to come up with a date for a team building. So, November is out of the question. We can do it in an evening, starting at 6 o'clock, or if you prefer, 6.30. So let's go through the first week in December, either Thursday the 5th, forget Friday. Uh, we could do it on uh, Tuesday the 10th. I could do that. You could do that. Mr. Foil on the 10th, Tuesday the 10th, could we do a team building? Okay, and Ms. Adrian, you'll have to look at Oh, okay. Okay, so we're gonna, Jackie, can you temporarily put it down for December the 10th, team building? 
Is six o'clock okay? And then uh, we'll check with, uh, we have to check with legal. Okay. Okay, uh, believe anybody, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sellier, do you have anything? And you? Yeah, just <coughs> State Board of Education is meeting this week. I don't know if anybody follows it or cares, but uh, <coughs> Nancy, what I'm talking about, it's trench warfare on Algebra 2 up there yes. to a graduation. I mean, it is. Did they nix it? They nixed it today. Okay, they won. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thanks, Mr. Gomez. Mm -hmm. Gonzalez. Okay. okay. I've got one. Arnold. Arnold, I'm up. Yes, ma'am. What? Thank you. Um, besides that, uh, that event at, at Wagner for the, there's also a 5K run that morning uh, uh, supporting the band. And I, yeah, and I know about runs because I just did the half marathon last week. And, and I'm, yeah, I've got a TASB, my first TASB board meeting this, uh, the 6th, 7th, and 8th, the 5th, 6th, and 7th in Austin. And I want to talk about some things going on at events. Uh, this isn't going to be fun, but I've heard from people that have attended events on our board that have talked to other board members and have said things about, personally about me. Once uh, a couple people came up at TASB last year and said, hey, one of your board members is talking about you, said they're going to get rid of you. You're not going to get reelected. And then at the conference last month, our board member was saying, hey, uh, you know, I don't know why Gilbert's on that board. And this is, I'm hearing it from other districts. And I just want people to know that I'm finding out these things. And I'm remembering all this. So, you know, when you talk about, when you're at these conferences, everybody was talking about what good their districts are doing. And our district is talking about, well, so-and-so is no good. I'm not going to talk about the other people. They said, I know they talked about me. And if you all want to talk about me, that's fine. Talk to me. Thank you. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. okay. The who? This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much. Amen, brother.